Good evening and welcome to the PVUSD board meeting for uh, sep Wednesday, September 11th. I am calling this meeting to order at 7.17 p.m. So again, welcome to the PVUSD board meeting. We have translation in Spanish. If you need that support, please see Urania Lopez. Um, bienvenidos a la reunión de la Junta Directiva de PVUSD. Disponemos de traducción en español. Si necesita ese apoyo, consulte a Yerenia López. This meeting will be live streamed and recorded. If someone would like to speak to an agenda an item on the agenda, they must complete a speaker card and submit it to Eva Renteria prior to the agenda item. Once an item has begun, cards will not be accepted for that item. Each speaker will have two minutes with a total, public, total time for public input on each agenda item to 30 minutes maximum. I also see that there are a lot of new faces here tonight, so I want to take a moment to establish some ground rules. There may be differences of opinion, sometimes strong differences. Please give those speaking the same respect that you would like to receive when you are speaking. This will allow everyone to be heard and the board to conduct its necessary business for the district. I also want to remind everyone of the adoption of the Governing Board of Education of PVUSD that established and adopted meeting norms from our last board meeting. I would also like to remind everyone that we do have a student trustee who is sitting up here with us as well this evening. I will now move us to item 3.2, the Pledge of Allegiance, and I will ask our student trustee to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Thank you, Student Trustee Esquida. All right, I will now move us to item 3.3, superintendent comments. This is where our superintendent of PVUSD schools, Dr. Heather Contreras, will make a few comments. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our PVUSD Board of Education meeting. Um, today, I had the distinct honor of attending our county fair. I was greeted by our students in FFA who were showing their pigs. They gave me a great tour of the work that they've been, been doing over the past year with their animals. Uh, they were so well spoken. They really could describe everything that had gone into that moment right before they were showing their animals and it was a really great occasion. Uh, we also got to celebrate our tiny home which is on display at the fair. This is students, over 200 students over two years helped to engage in building that home. It's a great celebration of our CTE programs. Uh, it'll be on display with a virtual tour that's just outstanding, so it was fun to see. Um, I also was able to see the arts display of many of our students, including adult education students, and the display that they had at the fair as well. It's a great way to celebrate our pre-K all the way through adult education, and it was a great day. Um, I've also gone to many classrooms over the last two weeks and saw excellent examples of students learning, teachers engaged, instructional aides supporting that learning, and it was really exciting to see uh, great attendance in those classrooms as well. Today our board meeting falls on 9-11, um, a moment to think past through past violence that has happened and to pause and um, think about how we can create a better world. And I would also like to wish our PIO, Alicia Jimenez, a very happy birthday. She gets to spend her birthday here with all of us today. Yay, Alicia. <laughs> And we are now going to celebrate our Red Apple Awards. Our Red Apple Awards are uh, ways that we celebrate the employees in the district for exhibiting the core values that have been by the board. Um, so I'm going to have Alicia Jimenez come to celebrate the Red Apple Awards. We'll also be celebrating um, our transportation department today uh, in light of some heroic uh, activity and bravery that they engaged in a couple of weeks ago. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is a pleasure to be here again in honoring our uh, STEAM peers from PVUSD. And um, I'm going to start with a certificate 
Today we are honoring Neil Cannon, a teacher in special education at EA Hall Middle School. Is Neil here? Come on, if he can come up. Thank you. Thank you. Neil, this is what they wrote about him. Neil Cannon is like the father of our campus. Everyone goes to him for advice, problem solving, and looks to his professionalism and his cool, calm way of helping problem solve. He has touched every single aspect of this school from special ed, athletics, student activities, and leadership. This man deserves recognition more than anyone I have ever known. And he embodies empathy. Congratulations, Mr. Neal. And if you can come this We're now going to call, um, actually, Maria Bonsal. She's an occupational therapist at Duncan Holbert. She is not able to be with us today, but she was very appreciative of the recognition, and they wrote about her. Maria is creative, passionate, enthusiastic, knowledgeable, and dedicated. She has consistently gone above and beyond for her students for the past 20 years while an occupational therapist at Duncan Holbert. She embodies integrity. Maria will make sure that you get your red apple very soon at your school. And thank you and congratulations. Alicia, Alicia, can I say something about Maria? Please. So Maria has been a long standing friend of mine, but I first met her when I worked in the intensive care nursery at Dominican Hospital. And she was the occupational therapist in there for the tiniest babies learning how to eat. And she is an amazing, amazing occupational therapist. And we are so fortunate to have her in our district. And we wish her all the best. And thank you, Maria, for your years of service. Thank you, Trustee Deserpa. That's wonderful. Yes, we're very lucky to have such wonderful employees at PVUSD. Our next recognized employees in administrative position. He is the Supervisor of Maintenance and Operation, Mr. Saulo Tirado. Come on over, Saulo. <laughs> His phone is constantly abuzz with calls, texts, and emails. As he moves from side to side, he does it with a smile and a sense of humor. He gives work advice, personal tips, and moves words, words into action. He remembers requests and projects, and he follows up by connecting the right team members to the schools, offices, or tasks needed quickly and swiftly, each and every time. And Saulo is being honored today for embodying excellence. Congratulations, Saulo. Thank you. Thank you. I also have the honor of speaking to the next item here. 
The bus, the bus accident of August 27th at approximately 7.30 a.m. brought 43 students from Aptos High School and Aptos Junior High, a bus driver, two parents and PBUSD staff together in an unexpected way. On August 27th at approximately 7.30 a.m., our community witnessed the birth of heroes as five individuals selflessly rushed into action when the bus was hit by a car that swerved into its lane, engulfing it in flames. Students were immediately escorted into safety, comforted, and transported to their school as soon as it was possible. Students were safe. On behalf of the superintendent and the Board of Education, I am honored to welcome the following five individuals and acknowledge their act of heroism and selflessness. Dr. Contreras and President Acosta will present each of them with a certificate. I'm first going to call, and if you can hold your applauses for a moment, please. I'm first going to call Amy Gutierrez. Amy Gutierrez is a bus driver for Michael's Transportation. She was instrumental in quickly notifying transportation and starting the process of evacuating the students. She acted quickly and calmly. And Amy, if you can come up here and just stand here, that would be wonderful. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I believe we have Kathleen and Cecil here from Michaels. Also, Michaels is going to be just with us. And Marisa Mora, a safety manager also from Michaels, are here to accompany um, Amy Gutierrez. And this speaks volumes to the importance of the right partnerships to support our students' needs. Now we're going to call PVUSD staff and brave people. The first one is Valerie Davis. Come on up, Valerie. <laughs> Valerie works here at the district office on the fourth floor as our workers' compensation analyst. She was dropping her son, Jonathan, off at the bus stop and heading back when she saw the aftermath of the ba uh, bus accident. She immediately went to the accident to help the driver evacuate the students. She also placed herself between the students and the man who caused the accident when he was being threatening. Look. She helped defuse the situation until police arrived. We're very fortunate to have you, Valerie. Thank you. Now we're going to call Mr. Josh Davis. Josh is the lead heavy equipment mechanic in transportation and the husband of Valerie. The driver called him after the accident, and he was instrumental in instructing her to get the students off the bus immediately. He was also on scene right away to assist the students and first responders. Josh stayed after to work with a tow company to clean up the accident. Thank you for being there, Josh. Richard Rocky Bass. Come on over. Rocky is a heavy equipment mechanic in transportation and arrived at the scene early on with Josh. Rocky assisted first responders and stayed after to work with the tow company to clean up the accident. Thank you for being there, Rocky. And last but certainly not least, we have Steve. Steve Tadei. Steve, come on over. Steve is also a heavy equipment mechanic in transportation and arrived at the scene early on with Josh. Steve assisted first responders and drove the remainder of the students to school. 
Thank you, Steve, for being there. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, um, Superintendent uh, Dr. Contreras. Um, I will now move us to 3.4, governing board comments. This is the opportunity for each board member to make a few comments. And we will start with our student trustee, Daniel Esquida. Thank you, Pre thank you President Acosta. Good evening to everyone here in attendance. This week, I had the opportunity to meet with ASBs from Watsonville, Pajaro Valley, and Aptos High School through our Superintendent Inner High Committee. Pajaro Valley's ASB stated how well Spirit has been at their campus. The school Spirit has created a more inclusive environment that allows all students to feel welcomed and to thrive. However, Pajaro Valley's ASB expressed their frustration with their inability to have Friday night games due to them not having lights on the field. This has resulted in Pajaro Valley being forced to host, ga host games on Saturdays, which is inconvenient for students and staff. Additionally, the absence of a crossing guard has created significant amounts of traffic. According to one Pajaro Valley High student, leaving campus at 345 means they will not get home until 430. The absence of a crossing guard ne needs to be addressed as soon as possible. The safety of students is vital and reducing traffic will ultimately alleviate the issue for both parents, staff, and students. Watsonville High commended their new activities director, Aaron Ashwell, who has excelled in raising school spirit to an all-time high. Homecoming season has fostered an increase in participation among all students. Watsonville High addressed their concern with the bathroom situation. According to students, bathrooms are in a bad condition. Students often wait to use the bathroom until they are home, which can lead to health issues, such as kidney problems. I advise the board to consider this issue further. Aptos High's ASB communicated the increase in school spirit along with the other high schools. Today, Aptos hosted its first club rush, which allows students to explore, learn, and sign up for clubs that they can participate in this academic year. Besides the club rush, Aptos ASB has successfully increased student participation through football game themes and kickoff parties at school in which students can get face paint and snacks and enjoy the game. Similar to Watsonville High, Aptos students have discussed their concerns regarding the bathroom situation. I suggest the agenda committee should consider placing this topic on a future agenda. On another note, I wanted to bring to the board's attention to a program that has been cut significantly due to COVID funds that no longer remain. Extended learning is a program that allows teachers and students to arrive at school earlier than normally scheduled to receive help on, stu on schoolwork, study, or makeup assignments. Specifically at Aptos High for the 2023 to 2024 school year, nearly 5,000 students utilize this opportunity that this program offers starting at 7.15 to 8.15 in the mornings. Aptos High had six amazing qualified teachers arriving at school earlier to, to devote their mornings to supporting students. Now, because of the absence of the funds, there will only be one teacher on campus in the morning for two days out of the week. In addition to the studying benefits, the program also allowed students to clear absences and tardies by attending in the mornings. Over 65% of students who attended the program were there to clear attendance, and I believe that given the attendance campaign that the district has launched, it is only fair that programs that aim to solve attendance issues should be supported with adequate funding. Saturday Academy is not convenient for any student or teacher, and I strongly advise the board to provide the necessary funding that allows teachers and students to excel in their academic journeys. I can also provide additional documentation and statistics if necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Student Trustee Esquida. We will now move to Trustee Bilano-Scow. 
Uh, good evening, everybody, and, and thank you for that impressive update for your first update. Student Trustee Esqueda, that was very impressive and very thorough, and thank you for bringing up the lights and uh, the crossing guard at PV High. We need to follow up on that, and that's something I'll be getting up on. Um, I also want to uh, congratulate uh, Calabasas Elementary and Freedom Elementary for a successful back to school nights. Uh, and our new principal, Ms. Uh, Angelique Yamas Bright, as I believe is her name, is really putting in an excellent effort to connect with that community. And that, that's a very strong community. And I, and I got to attend the back to school night, which was very impressive. I was saddened to hear about uh, the resignation of our colleague, Dr. Holm. We're going to miss you a lot. I'll save longer comments for your last meeting. I think we have three more meetings, but. It's going to be big shoes to fill. You've been an incredible colleague, very fair, very thorough. So size 11, thank you. And uh, my final request to my board colleagues and to President Acosta is that we have a discussion sometime about this public comment. It's, it's my opinion that we try to find a way to let everybody speak who comes to our meetings. I know there are. it's not in the public interest to have important agenda items at 11 or 12 at night. I, that's a valid concern as well. And maybe if we can have a discussion about it at that agenda item so we can just figure it out as a team, I would appreciate it that. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bolano Scout. Trustee DeSerpa. Thank you. Um, and to all the schools who have had successful back to school nights, um, congratulations. I went to a couple and they were wonderful. Uh, upcoming our harvest festivals as well at all our elementary schools, and I look forward to uh, attending some of those. Um, I've been working. Um, with uh, community members um, to take a look at the Rio Del Mar playground and hopefully help to rebuild that uh, at the earliest. And um, to my dear colleague, Jen Holm, thank you for all your years uh, of integrity and support here on the board. We're going to miss you. I would like to ask that the agenda committee take a look at the process for appointing a new board member in Jen's absence. Um, I think we have 60 days to make that appointment, so I'd like to get started on that. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa, and now Trustee Dr. Holm. Thank you. Um, so yes, I did submit my resignation, so my last uh, board meeting will be October 9th, and I just wanted to express my appreciation for the outpouring of support and understanding that people have sent or called. Um, a few people express concerns, so I just want to say it, it's my health is fine. I, I'm, I'm doing very well. Um, but I, I have seen an increasing conflict with my various roles. Um, like on the day that I submitted my letter, I, it's like I had a period of time in between when it went public, and I had a list of, of phone calls for our stakeholders that I wanted to let, you know, inform pers directly and personally. And I wasn't able to make all those calls because of my work responsibilities. And that, to me, exemplified my reasons for submitting my resignation. I, I have a commitment to a level of integrity in this role. And I believe that if I cannot meet my own standards, then I need to you know, make way for somebody who can. Um, so that's what's going on. And again, I appreciate the, the messages of support and understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Trustee Flores. Hello, everybody, and good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, I was able to attend a scholarship fundraiser that took place at Watsonville High School, and it was really nice to see the um, outcome. That I got to see the Watsonville High School volleyball team there, um, so that was nice. I also was able to attend some football games, so I want to just say that I was really happy to see our new safety protocols come out um, because I think having safe school events is really important. And having gone to other um, schools visiting, when my son was playing football, I saw what other schools were implementing and I saw that we were a little you know, behind the game. So a lot of these protocols that are being implemented are already being implemented in schools across California. So um, thank you for that. And I can't wait for Friday night's game. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Vice President, Trustee Soto. Good evening, everybody. Um, good to see everyone again. Um, I just want to mention that I did attend the uh, opening ceremony for Pajaro Middle School, and it's great to see that the school is up and running and very viable. Thank you, Hurley, for all your hard work and your gentlemen and your crew for making that happen. Um, I was able to be part of that as well to persuade our contractor to make some uh, moves to 
get the change orders or whatever, whatever else uh, needed to happen, make some phone calls. Um, I've had a very hard month this last month. I had a great loss in my family, and I want to extend a great thank you to all the outpouring support and condolences from the community um, for that. Despite what we hear and what we see, there is a large contingency out there that does support what we do and in, in our efforts. So thank you to everybody. And that being said, I also want to extend a great thank you to my colleagues here on the board for being very supportive during this time. And to you, Dr. Contreras, um, it's a very trying time for me, and I'm sure you all understand that. Um, to you, Jen Holm, thank you. I'm learning of your resignation as well. You know, it kind of took me back and surprised. You know, I know we've We've had our differences and we see things on different tangents at times, but we also do come to an agreement on certain things. And for that, I appreciate you. And I thank you for, uh, for being part of this board and me being able to have the experience to spend the time with you and, and learn about you and, you know, and have a better understanding of how people think. So thank you. Thank you, Vice President Trustee Soto. So, um, I'm going to extend my same thanks as well to Trustee Dr. Holm for her years of service on the board, and we'll have more comments in the future, especially, I think, on her last outgoing meeting on October 9th. Um, it will be um, a hard role to fill, and um, so, but thank you for all your years of service on this board. Um, I want to also take a moment to remind everyone that the Santa Cruz County Fair opened today and is open through this Sunday, September 15th. So if you get the opportunity to attend the fair, please take a moment to look at some of our PBUSD students' submitted work and projects, including and not limited to the tiny home. Um, I also, um, as Dr. Contreras mentioned in her um, superintendent comments, want to take a moment and reflect on what today is with being 9-11 and the tragedy that this country experienced 23 years ago on this day. I also want to take a moment to reflect on the horrific tragedy that happened in Georgia last week with the school shooting and the loss of life and all the victims and families that were impacted by this horrific tragedy. So I am going to use the balance of my time to ask for and take a moment of silence to recognize the victims of violence and their families of these horrific tragedies, so I will now call for that moment of silence. Well, thank you all for that moment of silence in honoring um, all the victims of violence. I will now move us to item 4.1, the approval of agenda. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we do. We have three. I'll call you up. You all come up together. Uh, Pam Sexton, Karina Moreno. Bernie Gomez.
Oh, oh, that's really loud. I thought it was loud enough. Um, Pam Sexton, adult educator, and I, um, I wrote to you all, um, and I'm here to ask you to pull the SRO agreement from the consent agenda and agendize it for a different meeting where there can be a public presentation that should include data, that should include a discussion. Um, input was given at the last presentation on the SRO and mental health clinician program. And the decision after that, well, the discussion of it was serious concerns related to the program and how the data was gathered. Um, you heard input from the community and then you made a decision to, to continue with some changes to, but to continue with an annual review and, and that has not been followed. Um, there should have been a review in March of, of this year and that did not happen. Um, I, in the time that I have, I just wanna say this is an issue that I understand some of you just want to, you, you know how you wanna vote and you're gonna vote that way, but you need to listen to the community and there needs to be process and you can't be saying you're gonna do something and then not do it. And that's, it, it feels, like, yeah, just being lied to. The group of community members that included students that were part of a committee that you put together made recommendations, and it feels like a slap in Thank the you, face Ms. to Sexton. all that of them. Thank you, Ms. Sexton, that is your time. Thank you. Hi, buenas noches, my name is Karina Moreno. Um, congratulations, Trustee Esquida, on, on your appointment, and congratulations on all your future endeavors, Trustee Holmes. Um, thank you for your service. It, it really was a pleasure to come and, and you know participate and, and hear your perspectives. And I mean, heartfelt um, condolences for you and your family for what you're going through. I also want to ask that you not approve the agenda as is. I hope that you do take a look um, at 9.16 and pull that from the consent agenda because on May 20. May 11th, 2022, there was talk about having it be an annual review. So every March it would come back and you would vote to either renew it or not after watching a detailed presentation, right? Because as the presentations have been given, they do show that low income, Latino and disabled students were being referred to SROs at much higher rates than any other student, and yet they were not the demographic that was being interviewed of, do you feel good? Do you feel safe? And so I think that that whole data set, there was talk of improving that, right? And bringing that back annually for review. And I think it's very irresponsible to just take the data set, and I do hope that you go back and look at the data set that was provided, um, and bring that back and, and do process, right? because that was what was promised. That's what we've been hoping to see. What does the data say? Or are we spending hundreds of thousands of dollars or an effort applying for grants for something that doesn't need? It said on the MOU that you are trying to improve the daily average population of, of the youth and you don't do it by, by creating an environment if they do not actually feel safe. Right, bring in, spend that money on engaging things, things that the teachers need, some of this morning um, things that Esquita brought up, invest it on how the students could actually use it. Thank you. Uh, buenas tardes, uh, Board of Trustees. Um, yeah, just kind of reiterating, you know, requesting for this agenda to not be approved as is, right? Um, after reviewing it and just reviewing the minutes from last year, right? Um, I believe there's a there was either a confusion, right? Uh, or a deliberate derelict of duty. I don't know what, which one it was, right? But um, the public um, deserves to have this data, the findings and outcomes of this program that y'all have implemented, right? 
uh, not just the SROs, you know, um, data and stuff, you know, but also the mental health the specialists, right? Like, what's the what's that data looking like too? Um, but and also just uh, thinking about, I want to know, and I think the public deserves to know too, how many of those interactions with the SRO um, have been. Um, abiding by state law, right, uh, SB 203 with, uh, that provides the youth Miranda rights to young individuals that are talking to the police, right, uh, in any capacity, whether they're detained, being um, investigated, um, whatever it is, right, so that is something that we would want to know, right, um, and I'll save the rest of my comments for uh, later on, but yeah, I think uh, there needs to be correction on uh, on the agenda. Oh, and making me think about the sheriff's MOU also, right? There was no presentation on that, so therefore, uh, if, there, if there was a violation or just, again, a confusion, whatever it is, I believe that that contract deserves to be rescinded and brought back, you know, and all payments and everything be rescinded and come back to its proper order, right? Thank you. Thank you. I'll bring it back to the board. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve. I have a first. Do I have a second? Point of order. Um, there is the avenue for people to pull a consent agenda uh, would happen under item nine, correct? Yes. Not necessarily in this item? Yes. Okay. But we had the, the requests were put in on public comment on 4.1, which isn't normal. But With that in mind, I will, I will second. Thank you. So I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That will carry 601. Moving to item 5.1, approval of the August 28th, 2024 board meeting minutes. Can I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. I have a first. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those, um, any opposed? Abstain. Any abstaining? I was going to get, so well, that will carry 5011. One. Okay. Um, 6.1, action on report closed sessions. The board will have to reconvene to close session. So this will be delayed until further when, uh, after the board uh, convenes from uh, closed session. We will now move to item 7.1, public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address issues that are not on our agenda for this evening. Please know that the, the Brown Act prohibits the board from engaging in discussion for non-agendized items, but we are listening. Do we have any public comments this evening? Yes, we do, and I'll call you in orders of six to come on up and uh, express yourselves. Bill Beecher, Esther Marillo, uh, Diana Martinez, Takashi Mizuno, Eli Davies, and Christine Hong. Good evening. I'm here to talk to you about the consequences of making no decisions. Not closing the schools. Class size goes down. The teachers are happy. Few classrooms are shut down. You still need as many teachers and support staff because you're still running as many classrooms. The cost per student goes up quickly. Timing. The longer you wait to make the tougher decisions, you will not know which schools you will close, so you have to, or which schools you're going to improve, and you may be improving schools that you're going to close. You need to put school closure on the agenda for the next meeting, and I've requested that through the superintendent, followed by Measure M projects. This is a formal request. Consequences, doing nothing will get you replaced, and you heard that last week, or last meeting. Part two, leadership. Leaders lead. Leaders have a vision. Leaders engage. Leaders build consensus. So what do we know about this board? There is no vision. 
there is no engagement, you don't make tough decisions, and you block all discussion and dissent. Actions. The board needs to have a vote of no confidence for the board president. The board needs to elevate the vice president to president or choose an interim replacement. Part three, measure L versus M. I was very active in L. I can speak on this. L had priorities for choices, had plans for each school, and it passed handily. Measure M has no priorities, has not defined what goes to which school. It will fail miserably. Measure M will fail from poor leadership. Thank you. So Esther, if you'll forgive me, so you've submitted two cards, one for yourself and speaking on behalf of another person. Yes. So you've been granted two minutes to speak for yourself and also on behalf of the other person you're representing. Great, thank you. And that came from the superintendent. Okay, my name is Esther Murillo and I am the personnel commissioner uh, board appointee. First of all, I'd like to start by thanking you for giving me this opportunity. I've really enjoyed it. I've been in office since December 2023. So I'm learning a lot going along. I want to begin by saying that I attended a three-day CSPCA conference in Monterey from March 3rd through the 5th. I really enjoyed that conference. It gave me an opportunity to meet with other districts in California, other commissioners and other staff uh, uh, com uh, personnel commissioners. Um, I also just completed uh, a Merit Academy that went from March through July. Um, again, that was about eight sessions, Zoom meetings that consisted of three hours each. Um, we, I learned a lot. I was given the opportunity to ask questions, give scenarios, um, work prob problem solving as well. So I was really impressed. Um, with that said, I also found out that only one of our analysts in HR have gone through that process. And so I really want to encourage that more of the personnel commission analysts attend these meetings, um, these trainings, because it's very, very informative. It gives you the opportunity to learn. Um, my personal goal is uh, to continue to learn. Next meeting will be in Napa. I'm encouraging all Board of Trustees to attend, including the superintendent. I will be attending that. Last year, the Personal Commission awarded several student scholarships. And the way we did that is um, our annual stipend is given back. We do not accept it. And we award um, scholarships to high school students. And last year, we awarded PV, Watsonville, and Aptost. Lastly, I'd like to say, um, to the, I met with the superintendent. Thank you very much for your time and for listening to our concerns. I just want to say briefly that um, I'm happy that we honored a bus driver here because of the accident that we had had. But I also want to let and remind um, our board of trustees that under previous leadership, we had bus evacuation trainings and it was taken away. In situations like this, it is so important that all our staff members, bus drivers, dispatchers, are trained in the proper matter. Please consider that to be brought back. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm speaking for Barbie Gomez um, for the Girl Squad. Some of you may or not may not have seen these T-shirts. We are community volunteers, and we support community, especially the youth. I want to let you know that. Back in July, we had a barbecue at Watsma High School. Uh, so it was a barbecue and craft fair. We raised seven, a little over $7,000 that day, and we awarded that money to the Watsma High School booster. That was in July. More recent, we had a breakfast and car show at um, Carmona's. I just want to let you know that that money that was raised on that day also will be awarded to uh, Watsma High School varsity uh, Football players for dinners served on Thursdays, and it, there will also be um, other organizations and or support teams that will be awarded with the Suncats, Tremblers, and special needs um, to attend the fair this year. Thank you very much for those um, Board of Trustees who attended our events. Adam, 
Georgia, Olivia, for attending some or all of those events. The one on Saturday that we had at Watts My High School uh, was very successful. We had over 50 vendors at that craft and flea market, and we will be awarding two $500 scholarships to Watts My High. Um, the varsity dinners are going amazing. So we have Watsma High School parents who come in, they set up, serve, and clean up. The Girl Squad is um, providing and supporting the dinners being served. Perfect example is last week we had uh, chicken alfredo, Caesar salad, a roll, and some homemade beautiful cook uh, football cookies. So tomorrow we will be, and they were, it was brought in by um, Carmona's. This Thursday, we're gonna be having Jaliscos and we'll be having chicken and cheese enchiladas along with delicias that will be doing the rice and beans. And then we have fruit salad coming in as well. So it's been an honor for me to participate and help in every way. Thank you very much. Good evening, board. President Acosta, Board of Trustees, Student Trustees, Dr. Heather Contreras, and Cabinet. Uh, Relay for Life. We are back um, after a COVID break. So we want to start um, by thanking Dr. Uh, Superintendent Dr. Contreras and Watsonville High School Principal Gregorio for hosting the 2025 Watsonville Relay for Life. Thank you. Uh, to start, uh, we will hold a kickoff, rally kickoff, at Jalisco, which will be on October 8th, and it will start at 12 noon until closing time. Um, they will be featuring delicious lunch and dinner specials, mm -hmm. and we will be signing up sponsors, committee members, teams, and accepting donations. Call me, email me. <laughs> hint, hint. Uh, we, we would like our board members to also be a team uh, for next year and help support this community event. So, challenge. <laughs> In the past, Relay has been a 24-hour event. For the year of 2025, it will be from, we will start at 8 a.m., it's to help set up, uh, to 7 p.m. to help close down as well. And, but the event will actually start from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, let's see. And the event, again, is scheduled for August of 2025, and the date will be announced soon. So we hope um, to see you there, to have your support, and again, it will be at Watson High in 2025 in August. Thank you very much. Oh, um, we are, we're also going to the one in Salinas, so we're going to pass this around if you want to go ahead and scan the cue card here and see what Relay is about, and this way for some of you who, who forgot or, you know, you want a reminder, um, it'll have information there for you. Thank you. Konbanwa. It means good evening in Japanese. I'm Takashi and Area 2. I'm here tonight to express my gratitude to trustee Dr. Jennifer Horum for your service for almost six years since 2018 as a leader of PBUSD Board of Trustees. I'm sure that you have had challenging and frustrating times since the board meeting on September 13th last year, because one of your colleagues and a couple of support, her supporters uh, <clears throat> criticized Professor Alison Tintaranko as anti-Semitic. And uh, uh, she sent a letter to all of you and demanded your apology and renew the contract with the CRE. And Dr. Holm, you are the only one, you are the only one trustee who responded to her and you also met her in person. And uh, tonight, uh, I have a gift for you. 
And the gift, I, this is called furoshiki in, Japan, in Japanese. And the people in Japan had used to use furoshiki to bring gift. And the gift for you is lacquer. This one. And the lacquer is an indigenous art of the people in Japan who have lived in Japanese archipelago and the Ryukyu Islands for several thousand years. My hometown in Japan has at least several thousand years of history. And this is gift is from my family and friends, including Professor Allison and Professor Wes Wesley Weunten. She is one of my best friends. They teach Asian American studies at San Francisco State University. We will miss you. My name is Eli, I live in uh, Area 7. Uh, just, just on the continuation of that, I wish you well, Dr. Holm. Um, when I was just starting to learn what was happening here, I would tell people, oh yeah, there's this one board member is my favorite because every October when like LGBTQ History Month comes up, she always comes out as bi. And everyone's like, that's so cool. And I'm like, I know. So it's a loss. Um, we do want to invite you all to our candidate forum that's happening Monday, September 23rd at 7 p.m. Uh, trustees of Costa and Soto, we still have two chairs open for you to join us at our candidate forum. A reply to our invitation email is all we need to get that ball rolling. Um, the event will be at Landmark Elementary Multi-Purpose Room, and everyone should come. We're going to talk about all kinds of things, ethnic studies, funding democracy. Uh, President Acosta, it is really unfortunate that you're continually limiting the amount of people who can speak. It is not fair to those who come after a work day and also creates an unnecessary and false sense of scarcity for being heard. I want to extend my thanks to Trustee Scow for speaking up on this. Stand with the community means not shutting down our voices. Shutting down public comment means shutting out voices calling for services like the bus evacuation training. Shutting down public comment means silencing parents, teachers, and students. We refuse the framework that aims to pit the community against each other to be heard. I want to point out that the Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers last meeting was calling you out and have chosen to endorse your opponents. Through your actions, you are reaping what you sow. The CRE contract needs to come back on the agenda. Thank you. I'd like to take this opportunity as um, a teaching moment and elaborate on something that I mentioned last week. I spoke about a beloved local teacher, Ms. Delia Mendez uh, from Watsonville High. Her commitment to her students was a commitment to community well-being. And I want to speak about her. She was at our first freedom school. What she did, I described it as ethnic studies in action. She transformed the injustices that she, her students, and their parents experienced as teachable material. And she understood that for learning to be meaningful, it has to, um, it must uh, critically examine the structures of violence that for well over a century have conditioned the lives of the working class in Watsonville. In her classroom, she centered the study of the strike 
Um, this included the collective power of organized labor, but it also included the use of police force to quash the strikers' democratic right to protest, to organize, and to strike for livable wages and health care. Not coincidentally, she, alongside her students, was targeted by the police for arrest near the picket line. The police were maintaining law and order, yet what order were they protecting? Ms. Mendez and her students were disrupting the status quo of racialized poverty, of routinized discrimination, of disenfranchisement, of systemic injustice, of labor exploitation, and of over-policing. What interests were they protecting? Agribusiness. And this is what she stated. She said, my students, they saw the mistreatment. They didn't want to be in a similar situation, so they went on to pursue an education, higher education. She taught the injustice. Her students went on to law school. They were galvanized by the study of injustice in her classroom. She said, in my classroom, we take the negative, we turn it into a positive. This empowers us. Thank you, Christine. All right, next six speakers, Bobby Peltz, Omar Diakis, Brandon Dinitz, Hector Lopez, Emmanuel Silva, and Sofia Gomez. Uh, Bobby Peltz, uh, Watching Go High. Uh, for once, I'm here not to speak on the CRE contract, but to extend an invitation. Uh, when the board first announced that they hired Dr. Contreras, they talked about how it was a difficult, it was a difficult process, but that in the end, they all agreed on the same person. I remember several of you saying how impressed you were with the result because getting this board to agree completely on anything is challenging. But what I remember most is something that Trustee Soto said. He said that often when the board discusses difficult decisions like hiring a new superintendent, there's a lot of strong disagreement and debate. But he said disagreement is healthy. And he's right. Disagreements are undoubtedly healthy. The best thing about having disagreements is that setting, settling them help people to learn, help them to grow, and help them to improve. When we work through our disagreements, we come to better ideas. We find solutions, and we begin to understand each other. A key piece of what makes disagreements healthy is communication. You cannot move forward if you cannot talk about your disagreement. To that end, I would like to invite trustees Acosta and Soto to join Trustee Sal and your student trustee in attending the PVESJ Freedom School Candidate Forum at Landmark Elementary on September 23rd at 7 p.m. And of course, for good measure, support ethnic studies, bring back CRE. Thank you. My name is Omar Rodriguez. I'm with Barrios Unidos of Santa Cruz. And I am here today to personally invite Georgia Acosta, Oscar Soto, to uh, join us at a candidate forum on Monday, the 23rd of September. There will be food, there will be music, there will be students there that are going to be uh, joining us to, to see how our community and our leaders can empower them. Come out there to us and help us promote empowerment to the students, show them how to be leaders, and join us, please. So I'm here to extend that invitation to you guys, please. Brandon Denise, Negotiations Chair for the PVFT. Just want to start off my comments by piggybacking on what's been said. Georgia and Oscar, if you don't show up to that forum, you have even less integrity than I already see that you do. You don't have. Um, I wanted to keep my comments short and sweet because Georgia is limiting our ability to speak, but you all just keep giving me ammunition because you cannot, you like have no ability to be reflective or have awareness when we're cutting people off right at two minutes when they couldn't get their microphone work to work, but then we're allowing someone else to go over to tell us what kids had for lunch, you're trying to pit us against each other and it's not going to work. We all deserve to be heard. So have some integrity, have a backbone, and nix this 30 minutes on public comments. I'm sorry that you have to stay late and do your job every two weeks, but that's just the way it is. Um, I went out and I emailed each one of you and I challenged you to respond to me and to take this 30 minute 
limit off. And I want to say thank you to the one board member who did respond to me. Thank you, Adam. And thank you for your comments to the rest of your colleagues here. I am amazed that you even have the like anatomical integrity to sit before us because you have no backbone. So let's show that you actually have some integrity and take this cap on public comments away. <laughs> Good evening, Board of Trustees. My name is Emmanuel Silva. I come here to speak on the renewal of the CRE contract again. As you might already have been informed, ethnic studies is now a requirement in the educational curriculum. I myself, along with several other of my colleagues, urge you trustees into taking action and renewing the contract. With the neglect of professional teacher training, Watsonville High School will receive an undermined ethnic studies education, adding on to one of many issues within my school. As for the false allegations, allegations of anti-Semitism within ethnic studies curriculum just being blatantly false, having no evidence of such claims, rather this course teaches students to be open-minded and learn about the perspectives of communities and cultures that students may not have been exposed to yet. We have learned to be empowered within ourselves and demand for change when it is needed. I, I encourage you board members to take your youth into consideration and renew the CRE contract. Thank you for your time. Hey. All right. Good evening board. My name is Hector Lopez and I am currently a senior at Watsonville High School. And I've come here to speak on the behalf of the CRE contract. Uh, the ethnic studies class that I have uh, taken so far have not taught me to foster any hatred towards any individuals. And it has rather helped me get out of my comfort zone by allowing me to express my opinions on certain matters that no other class has done. This is one of the few classes that I have actually been able to learn something valuable uh, out of and not just been given an assignment and left on my own to complete it. Uh, this class makes me feel seen for once in my education and has taught me to fight against the prejudices that are taught against minority groups and challenge them for change. It has taught me to be a leader, uh, to take up a leader role and make my impact within my community that would benefit uh, many of the up and coming students at Watson High School. Um, I speak here urging you trustees to reevaluate your decision on the CRE contract. And I would like to thank my English teacher Pels right here, you know, for always, for, always, for always helping me out and being one of the few teachers I can count on. And for, um, I'm, I'm sorry I forgot your name, but I'm sorry for your loss. You know, my condolences, you know. I hope you get better by every day. And yeah, thank you for your time. Have a great day. Hello, my name is Sofia Gomez, and I'm a sophomore in high school. I made the mistake of not consistently showing up to these meetings when I should have su supported my community every step of the way. Uh, I'll try to keep it simple. Let's be mature trustees, renew the CRE contract for this lovely community behind me. And as a PV high student, we deserve a theater, a performing arts center. We deserve a pool. Our band is amazing. Our theater students are amazing. They deserve better than a wrestling room. Help your community, support us, and sign CRE. Thank you. All right, last seven speakers to this item. Uh, Mark Mendoza, Chris Webb, Itzel Barraza, Elias Gonzalez, Marilyn Garrett, Pam Sexton, and Bernie Gomez. Good evening, board. I am here standing once again. It's late. I'm tired. I should be at home finishing my homework because tomorrow I have band practice until 730. 
But now I'm here once again. Why? Because I care about my education, unlike some of the trustees here. I care about my future, the future of students, such as my siblings and cousins, who will soon be in high school and will take an ethnic studies class. Every student who has spoken at the school board about the re renewal of CRE contract cares for the future of other students. Some students that speak up about all these issues are on their last year of high school and should be worried about their future, but they stay and fight with other students. You know who should be caring about students' education? You guys, because it's your job. Understand that. If you, can't, if you can't understand that, then leave the seat for someone who's qualified to fight for students. Bring back CRE. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ishel Barraza. I'm here again for like the billionth time. I'm here to ask you as a student, uh, or I'm here as a student taking time out of my day uh, of doing homework and other extracurriculars um, to ask you to please come to the upcoming uh, Freedom School and the Candidate Forum on September 23rd. Uh, thank you, Trustee Scow, for, uh, and our student trustee for, res for actually responding to us. Um, we're still waiting on a reply for, uh, uh, for Acosta and Soto. Please show that you are like. Please show that you're responsive to this community. And I also want to say, I urge you to renew the CRE contract. Um, <clears throat> buenas noches, uh, Elias Gonzalez. Um, I'm tired, right? I think we're all tired here, right? But we're gonna keep showing up. Um, so with that being said, it's the first and foremost, it's the so sad to hear you retire, I think, uh, and I think even more respect after hearing the integrity and just understanding that we can't just do it. And looking at the mirror is important, so thank you for looking at that mirror, something that we all need to do. So thank you for that. Mr. Soto, my sincere condolences. We may not see eye to eye, but that does not take that away. So my sincere condolences to you and your family, prayers for your family as well. Um, again, just here uh, with the rest of the community here inviting you to this forum. Uh, we want to have a conversation. We want to have questions. We may not see eye to eye, but I think uh, overall what we're asking you to do is, I think the young people need, first thing we need as young people is acknowledgement. We need to be acknowledged and we need to know that we're being seen, right? The second part is understanding, right? We need to have an understanding and not, that doesn't go just for the young people, that goes for all the adults as well. Why aren't we agreeing here? With so much ugliness happening in the world, we're trying to do something different in the space. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to come together. We're trying to have conversations. And this whole us versus them dichotomy that's happening out there, we need to step away from. How do we start building community? We're all here for the same reason, I believe. We're here for the community. How do we start coming together? Um, this is the first time I see this, but there's some values here. And we can go down the list, but I think these are all values that we all want to live by. How do we actually strive to push for these values, right? As a collective, as a community, as a village, because that's what we all need. That's what our young people need. With that being said, again, uh, inviting you to the candidate forum. Uh, yours truly will be a facilitator. So we'll, be, we'll have a good time, right? We'll have good food. We'll have a good time. Please show up, hang out with us. Again, uh, in a good way. Uh, this will not be in any way disrespect for anything that way. We may not see eye to eye, but we welcome you all and we want to see you there that night. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Uh, good evening. I'd like to begin by um, commending uh, our superintendent on the sustainable budget plan. Just the, the structure of it and some of the provisions, um, they, they were heartening. Um, also, I wanted to share a shout out that, uh, or the highlight of my first, first full week of the school year. And that was when um, a student that I had met said, oh, you used to work at Renaissance? Oh, do you know this student? It's like, oh, yeah, I remember him. And then um, she like texted him, and then he was very excited that, um, for that connection. And then she, he had said, oh, yes, he helped me graduate. And um, I want to segue with that to, um, I hope you guys approve item 917, um, because I did help that a lot of kids graduate over there. Um, I pride myself on my work as an Ameri as a academic advisor there. Um, I feel like that's a role that is was underappreciated, thrown away. And, and as I, I'm not so sure that the comp highs do have it better. I actually think that maybe Renaissance High had it better, real Renaissance High, model continuation Renaissance High. And um, when we got away from that, um, there's been 
when I heard that part about the Mean Girls Club at uh, Rolling Hills, that very that, that hit home to me from my experience at Renaissance. Um, I feel like that's kind of what's happened um, between um, a bully that was empowered there um, to kind of supersede my job, even even in spite of me basically doing the job that I've been trained, um, doing it better than the person taking it over. Um, and then also just the, the front office culture there has been problematic, people um, operating outside of their role. So I do hope 917 passes. Um, I Maybe they can f follow up on, on a complaint that I haven't really heard back on. And uh, it's shocking because there's just a trove of evidence. Um, also, I want to say on Measure M, we should um, prioritize HVAC for, for Watsonville High. We should do the pool and the theater at PV. And um, Renaissance still needs a field. Thank you. Hi, again. I want to start um, these comments with um, gratitude and um, happy birthday to Alicia. Um, condolences to Oscar. And um, Jennifer, I'm home. I'm, I want to express gratitude for, for your service. And, and again, yeah, I, I've especially appreciated your um, recognition of the queer community, your um, representation as someone with personal experience advocating for students with um, special needs. And as someone who has always been open to talk, um, you gave your time to, we had a, a group of people talking about the issue of SROs and you not, you not only give time, but you also um, engage constructively and thoughtfully and have asked, you know, what can I do? I appreciate that. Um, I um, am also, I want to, so I, I almost didn't want to speak because you're limiting the time I was afraid students would not have the opportunity to speak. Uh, it is horrifying to me, uh, just seconding, thirding, fourthing what's been said. You're supposed to be a model to students. And this is not modeling what leadership is, what democracy is. I am so proud of these students. I, my children are, are about the same age. And, and I remember when I was that age and coming to a board meeting alone is intimidating, but getting up to speak, please, please do better. Um, and thank you, Adam, for, for speaking on that. And Bernie Gomez um, with Milpa. Um, just first off, is uh, it might be uncommon, Acosta, to you know to address 4.1, but that is my right, and I haven't been here for a while, so I'm gonna take as much time as I can just to hear myself speak, and hopefully you guys can listen. You know what I'm saying? Um, but just uh, uh, Soto, you know, just condolences for you and your family and the loss, right? Um, Congratulations to Daniel Esqueda, right, for that seat, you know? Uh, you know, ojo, you know, to what's going on, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, it's impacting you, it's like with your peers and stuff, también. Um, and what I am going to say, though, is that it's important to show why you're the right person for that job, you know? Um, and being in conflict or in friction or in disagreement shouldn't deter you from showing people, hey, this is why I deserve to be on that seat. You know what I'm saying? Um, according you know, to this uh, forum that's happening, you know, I believe it's a perfect you know, time to you know, show up. You know? and that's one thing that I appreciate about Dr. Holm. You, know, you are gonna be missed. You know, I do always enjoy uh, watching you speak, listening to you speak, right? Because it, it comes from the, I feel like it comes from the heart, you know, that you put thought into what you're saying, right? And I think that everyone else here can really take a little bit of some, a little bit of that, you know? Um, and 
you know, not up here telling you guys that you guys are bad people or whatever, you know, but you are providing, you know, you are showing bad examples, you know, bad actions, you know, and it's like everybody's fucking li excuse me, everybody's liable to to feel the, the way they do, you know, but when you have the majority of people here talking right, it can't supersede like the few emails or whatever people that are not here to speak you know, about, you know, so bring back CRE. Censorship and banned book protest. This is appropriate for the school district. Sunday, September 15, 2024, outside Bookshop Santa Cruz, 1520 Pacific Avenue from 1 to 3. Bring signs and banners and books banned by the bookstore. Here's one of the books banned by the bookstore, The Unfortunate Truth About Vaccines, Exposing the Vaccine Orthodoxy by Leon Canron. The censorship, and I'm reading this, is from Brave and Free Santa Cruz at ProtonMail.com. The censorship industrial complex has its roots in our community. Casey Coonerty Prodi is the owner of Bookshop Santa Cruz, and her husband, Michelle Prodi, is the head of online safety at Meta. His department permanently deleted the Columbia Students for Justice in Palestine's main Instagram account on August 28th containing roughly 124,000 followers. <clears throat> he was also shadow banning or deleting information about COVID vaccine injuries, removing a site where over 40,000 vaccine injured people had to discuss their suffering and possible health treatments. Michelle Prodi also hit news reports about the Hunter Biden laptop on Facebook interfering with the U.S. presidential election. Bookshop Santa Cruz celebrates Banned Book Month while Casey's husband is banning information on Facebook and Instagram. Brave and Free Santa Cruz at ProtonMail.com. Thank you, Marilyn. Censorship and democracy don't go together. Speaking of which, I did submit a card to the board. Is that all of our public comment? Yes, it is. All right. I will now move us to eight, our employee organization comments. Now is the time that we hear from our employee organizations. Each will have five minutes, and we will start with the Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers, 8.1. Do we have anyone here from PVFT wishing to speak? Good evening. I'm Nelly Vaquera, Vaquera, sorry, Nelly Vaquera, um, president of the Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers, Local 1936. Good evening, board. Good evening, Dr. Contreras and President Acosta. So first I want to um, say thanks to Dr. Holm for her service on the board. We helped put her there. Um, we hope to see you advocating on the front lines with the health workers in the future. Um, I have like various notes for myself to bring up and there's a lot. There's been a lot in the beginning end of this school year. So one thing that's on my mind is mental health. And Mr. Soto, mental health is affected when we grieve because we're so full of love when we miss those that we lose. Um, so pesames to you and your family. Um, and this mental health is, it impacts everybody. It, it, is, it weighs heavy and it's been doing so for many years. Yet what I see is our members, our staff being burdened with more work and um, no supports. And so there's no sustainable workloads and there's nothing that's really fostering a healthy workplace. And that's a concern for me. Um, 
I see teachers that are pressured into teaching through their prep time. They're taking on what, they, what we call the point two, which is a big savings for the district because what the district then doesn't do is they don't hire somebody for that vacancy. And that's a huge savings for them. On the emotional backs of our people. Um, so, you know, I hear community members come up and say we should close schools. That really, for me, is um, knowing history of, the, of some of the community members. There's a lot of prejudice in that. And it, that also weighs heavy on me. Um, as a Latina leader in this community, for the school district, for the teachers, and for our students, and for the, my own two children who I raised in this school district and attended our amazing schools. <clears throat> so I take the comments that our public makes seriously, not only as a parent, but as an employee of this district and a community member. I see understaffed sites. The only place that isn't understaffed this year is the district office. But I see understaffed sites, over two dozen vacancies, many of those in special ed. Our parents should be concerned. When we talk about a sustainable budget committee, what I hope is that there is a reflection on this district to reprioritize where they're putting their money because they're not putting it at our sites. We have students in special services who aren't receiving all of the minutes that they should be receiving. That's the help that they need to receive through their IEPs. We see our general ed teachers um, suddenly having to take on students um, who are in our special needs classes. And we are not against inclusivity, but we are against not having a conversation to prepare everybody at a site on how we work with our students who have many different types of learning abilities and learning needs, and then not providing supports. Um, <clears throat> I also wanna say, the, the unaudited actuals, and I understand, I, so Jenny, I like you, and I'm gonna be easy on you. Um, they weren't attached until today. That's a problem. Uh, we wanna have, this is like the one time where we can begin a conversation, and I didn't really have the time to go through the, the, the unaudited actuals, but you know, we talk about, oh, we need to make budget cuts, or you know, you're lucky we didn't, we didn't ex you know, exercise our, um, our right to lay people off in August, because it's only a 1.07 COLA. This is like an unnecessary threat. There, you increased your bottom line by 23%. So, um, <laughs> educators and support staff make up, make up for a lot of the district office's shortcomings, and it's exhausting. So we are, what are these things that are impacting us? The delayed bargaining, um, delayed and uncommunicative human resources office, not providing information requests when we ask them. We have information requests that we put in in June. Not following through with agreements that we have for our member settlements. And um, thanks, Nelly. I just so I do want to say that we are working with Dr. Contreras, and I'm going to give that to her. But <laughs> I'm I'm also beginning to tire. Thank you. We'll now move to Ina um, 8.2. Point of order, speaker. Do we have a public speaker? Yeah, we have one speaker, 8.1, Bill. Thank you. This board may think I'm tough on you. I've been even tougher on PVFT. But this is one time where I have to applaud what they've done. They changed who they were going to back in this next election. I thought that was terrific. We have a dysfunctional board. Changing several of the members on this board will change that whole att attitude. Thank you to PVFT. 
We will now move to item 8.2, California School Employees Association. Do we have anyone here this evening from CSEA? Seeing none, we will now move to 8.3, Communication Workers of America, CWA, our Substitute Teachers Union. Do we have anyone here? Seeing none, we will now move to 8.5, uh, excuse me, 8.4, the Pajaro Valley Association of Managers, Pavam. Do we have anyone here? Thank you. Good evening, President Acosta, Superintendent Dr. Contreras, and Board and Cabinet. My name is Peggy Pugh. I'm the Executive Director for Teaching and Learning. The Pajaro Valley Association of Managers is excited to continue to support our school sites and district departments through this month of September. We're eager to celebrate the, uh, all of the accomplishments that our school sites uh, through all of the shared hard work that everyone is doing together. So we're grateful for everyone's partnership. Now that our back to school night season is starting to draw to an end, um, we're, we move on to even more family engagement opportunities, including our upcoming parent conference, Rise and Shine, it's back to school time. And that is scheduled at EA Hall on September 21st from 8 to 1. Child care for ages 3 to 11 at Minty White School with interactive, hands-on, engaging activities. So we hope to see you there. Breakfast and lunch is provided for our children and adults. We'll have a community resource fair. We'll learn about excellent services provided in our local community. And there's a drawing for prizes at both locations during child care and the resource fair. And finally, congratulations to this week's Red Apple Award winner, Saulo Toronto. Neil Cannon and Maria Bonsal. We are so grateful for their partnership because it truly does take a village to do the work that we're all doing together. So thank you. Thank you, Pavam. I will now move us to. I don't have a speaker card for 8.4 for Neil. I do not have a card, but I will go ahead and allot you two minutes here. If the, and this is in regards to item 8.4, because that's the current agenda item. Okay. I, I wanted to express my appreciation to uh, the management of the district for another great PD day to start the year. Um, I want to thank you for that. I ask, I'm appreciative that the upper management decided not to, you know, uh, squander that goodwill by, you know, undermining the contract with the PN Day did business as they did last year. I also wanted to take a moment to um, thank Lisa Gedia for her service here. I especially, I've, I'm reflecting on her departure, I'm especially appreciative of two things. One, she helped me get some ethnic studies related books for my Renaissance students, and um, that was before I knew ethnic studies was going to be attacked by our own board. So that I'm I'm thankful to have those. Uh, also, I wanted to thank her because um, when I got attacked by by the bully of Renaissance, um, that that person tried to block or was blocking one of my students from matriculating, and um, Lisa helped that student after they reached out to me in the summer. She when they were and they were still going to be blocked come fall. She intervened to get that kid able to go to Watsonville High. I would just ask that um, in order to ensure we have due process and equity, we make sure there are clear terms for any student who goes to Renaissance or a new school, clear terms for matriculating back. They should be public. Also, I want to, you know, I know there's a lot of new um, administrators, and I would, I would encourage anyone, actually anyone who's a leader, not even just an administrator, but anyone to go back to a um, board meeting um, from J July 28th, uh, 2023, go to the 1040 minute mark and listen to Elaine the Guerrera talk about um, being a leader. She had some really good points. One of them was making a safe space for feedback. So I want to um, encourage everyone to do that. Thank you. I will now move us to item nine, our consent agenda. Consent, um, our consent agenda. Our consent items that are routine items that are coming before the board. Do we have any public speakers to the consent agenda? Uh, yes, we do. And I will call you up at six at a time. Eli Davies, Christine Hong, 
Bobby Peltz, Omar Diegas, Brandon Dennett, and Elias Gonzalez. I'd like to give a little bit of a history lesson. During a time of US war in Vietnam, in which an estimated three to four million Vietnamese were killed, um, there were race riots all across the United States. Up until the 1960s, race riots actually designated white vigilante violence against communities of color. From the 60s onward, that shifted. According to the critical geographer Ruth Wilson Gilmore, from the 1965 LA Watts riots onward, Urban uprising became a means by which black and other people held court in the streets to condemn police brutality, economic exploitation, and social injustice. Scholars who were observing that there was this militarized counterinsurgency happening in the streets of this country described something emerging. Nixon called it law and order. Critical scholars called it a police industrial complex. And they stated that the police were being held out and would increasingly be held out as a solution to social problems and crises that are consequent to the inequality of capitalism. And so they said that the police serve as a large scale class control force that, local, that socially engineer um, society. And so the problem to truancy, the problem to hunger, to mental health issues, to protest and uprising, to economic desperation, the police were increasingly being held out. But of course, they're not a solution. They're part of a structure that is invested in inequality. We have a choice. You can choose guns or you can choose butter. You can choose to invest in the police or you can choose to invest in social services. I want to reiterate what's been said about the processes around presentation of the data on SROs that have not been realized. This item should be pulled from the consent agenda so that honest discussion can take place. This is too complex an issue to just quietly pass. I would like to recommend to this board the book, The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander, which speaks deeply on mass incarceration and on funding for police, as well as the financial incentives for the criminalization of people of color. Other data from the ACLU makes it clear that there is statistically significant correlation between police presence in schools and increased likelihood of arrest for all students. For Latino students, the likelihood of arrest is 6.9 times greater in schools with police presence than without. Everyone here wants safety at schools, and those who are here advocating for data on SROs and for discussions also want safety. This needs to be presented and talked about. Uh, Bobby Pell, Watsonville High. Um, I believe there was to be an annual report on the SRO contract. Uh, I do not remember seeing that report, and forgive me if I missed it, but I respectfully request that you not approve this contract uh, until the report that details the measurable effects SROs are having on our district has been given. Uh, this SRO contract will cost the district over $300,000 in addition to the money already spent uh, on the SRO at Aptos. For half a million dollars, the public needs to see what we are getting in return. Uh, I cannot help but uh, wonder if we could get a larger return on the money through more mental health supports, community-based organizations, and prevention programs. I understand that SROs make some in the community feel safer, but how we feel and what is actually happening are two different things. I urge you to wait on this contract until we have hard data demonstrating that it's worth it. Thank you. Omar Gigues, Barrios Unidos, 
I, I also ask that you guys consider the SRO contract and take a little bit more education into it and get your stats, look deeper into it. What I could say is that uh, we need more community-based organizations like Barrios Unidos, Milpa, and there's a lot of other organizations that are in our community that, that nurture uh, student empowerment that are there to mentor these students, to guide them, to help them in any way that they can. Uh, uh, when I was at Aptos High School in the 90s, Barrios Unidos was on campus, and because of Barrios Unidos, I now, I do, I now they inspired me enough to do the work that they do, and I work for them. But they didn't make a difference when I was at high school. Uh, they, they, they made a difference so much that it touched, that it made me, when they were on campus, I realized that I wanted to do what they were doing, mentoring the kids and helping kids. Uh, but uh, the amount of money that is going to be spent on SROs versus the amount of money that could be spent on community-based organized organizations is a big difference. And, and I think that the community-based organizations have a better effect on, on, on the kids rather than the SROs on campus. Uh, when Barrios Unidos was at PV High recently, uh, they were there for 12 years. When we were there, there was almost no violence on campus. There was very little violence. There was a lot of mentorship and there was a lot of guidance. There was community built within the students and unity. What she said, um, Brandon, Denise, um, I had, this is an opportunity for you to show that you're actually listening. I know that with the Brown Act, you can't engage with us, but you can show that you're listening. And this shouldn't be too hard to pull this agenda item, put together a report and come back when you have some data. Um, I may be misunderstanding something, but I also believe that there should be a report that goes along with this renewal. Um, there are those of you who are looking to make immediate cuts to the budget. So why are we rubber stamping almost $400,000 to go to a project that does not make our students safer and only subsidizes the prison industrial complex? At best, the SRO report slipped your minds, and at worst, you are deliberately shoehorning this contract and program onto our students and community without doing the diligence of reporting on the efficacy of this contract. If I am wrong, I will come back before you and acknowledge that I am wrong, because I, unlike some of you, have a backbone. Um, buenas noches again. Again, I remind you I'm tired, um, but we have been coming to this board uh, for over seven years, myself and my organization, just continuously talking about this issue, right? Um, getting police dogs out of campus, getting uh, police officers off campus. And again, for me, it goes back to the, the public, I mean, redefining public safety. We want safety too. Uh, the community wants safety too, but I don't think we're going to go through policing our communities and through programming ourselves. We need to start being a little bit more innovative and thinking about different solutions. Um, so again, it's important that we look and listen to the community. The school to prison pipeline is real, right? Uh, it's real and we can talk about it, but we can also look at our prisons. They're being filled up in these processes, right? And that's where we're funneling our monies. We're spending more in prisons prison per individual than we're spending in our students, right? We talk about as they're caring about our students, um, this is an opportunity to actually offer the healing. Where is the healing of our students in this community? Because we're struggling in this community. Mental health, I just heard it. Mental health, we're struggling. I mean, we're in one of the most expensive counties in the region. Our families are struggling just to eat, right? So again, public safety, um, the healing of our students, because nobody's talking about their healing. And I think it's unfortunate that we are aligning ourselves with folks that, and I get it, it's scary, right? We're gonna challenge the status quo. We might turn away from some police, but I know these are the folks that are maybe rubbing our shoulders and they might get upset. That's the reality, but let's have a conversation. Let's ha look at our funding and let's look what we can do a little bit differently for the rest of our community to thrive. 
if we're really here for the students, we'll think about their healing as well, not just the relationships we may hurt by saying no to an SRO contract. Thank you. I'll now call up the next six speakers, Bernie Gomez, Karina Moreno, Gabriel Barraza, Dr. Lourdes Barraza, Pam Sexton, and Marilyn Garrett. Uh, well, buenas noches, once again, Bernie Gomez. Um, so, pull uh, this uh, item 9.16, right? Um, so that we can get that presentation, right? We can get that data. We can make an informed decision, right? Um, and it, regardless if you have made up your mind, if you are pro-police or uh, just whatever it is, right? Uh, I do want to say that this is not a, like an anti-police campaign or whatever, you know, it's just like some of us just have a direct lived experience, right, of like those type of uh, contracts, you know what I'm saying? And there's always going to be those that, oh, yeah, they make me feel, they do make me feel safe, right? Or, you know, you're always going to have that, you know, but those are the only ones that are always being listened to, you know what I'm saying? The data that's been brought before us before has been at the least very screwed, right? And not really voicing uh, or um, giving us the information of uh, the opposite. I'm trying to say that those voices are usually ignored, right? Uh, but I think we're here, you know, just letting you know, it's like there's other ways to create safety, right? There's other ways to create a secure and a, uh, a safe, learning environment, right? There's other ways to uh, spend money, right? And then just another question too, why this presentation is important is like, where is this money coming from? Is it part of the, the school funding, right? Is it a grant? You know, um, is, uh, you know, is there two SROs now? I know that's saying that, you know, that there's one pending, you know, are we paying the city up front? You know what I'm saying? And another thing, too, is you don't realize the impact that you're putting on the city as well, right? This is a, the, the reverse side is it, it is that you're taking, actually, resources from the community, too, right? You're taking resources from the city. Um, and at the end of the day, I hate to say this, but we can't overburden this, these police officers, right? Uh, but we can do is support the community, right, uh, by creating something different and allowing the, that department to do what it needs to do you know, outside of the schools. Thank you. My name is Gabriel Peraza and I'm in Area 5. I am definitely not going to be as articulate as Dr. Hong, but I'm going to tell you guys, you know, as community leaders and politicians, you have a choice. You have a choice to do what is easy which is try to hammer your way out of a situation that re requires much finer tools, or you can do what is effective. You could build community, or you could try to suppress community so that it conforms to some ideal that you may have in your head. You know, police have their role in society. There are people who are dangerous who may not need to be out in the streets. But high school students are not those people. Middle school students are not those people. Most people commit crime not out of some sociopathy or psychopathy. Most people commit crime out of a perceived necessity because they lack the resources that they feel that they need to survive. They lack community. They lack support. They have suffered trauma. If we address those needs as a community, if we put money into those things, giving people enough to eat, giving people a safe place to live, giving people enough so that they have time for recreation, to enrich themselves as people, to bond with their community members, then we eliminate a lot of the problems that require police intervention. You guys have a choice. You can plug the police in as a stopgap measure, sending more of our black and brown kids into prison, or you can 
rescind this item from the agenda and be leaders for the community. Uh, good evening, I'm Dr. Barraza. Um, so, President Acosta and Vice President Soto, so far you're the only two candidates that have not responded to the forum. I hope that you think about that because it would be nice for the community and the kids to be able to ask you questions about why you, you should be sitting on that board representing the students. Um, Dr. Holmes, we're gonna miss you. Um, you know, you, as uh, uh, Mr. Takashi said, you were the only one who bothered to educate herself on ethnic studies, actually reached out to Dr. Tintango Cubales, and for that, we really appreciate you because it showed that you were really interested in what we were saying. So thank you, and you will definitely be missed. Um, and we still may, may contact you. Um, so. Uh, like everybody, I really think this needs to be rescinded. It should not be on the agenda today. Um, and you know, I know um, Trustee Dodge, you said people feel safe, but people feel safe because they feel that's the only thing that's out there. Do they know what other options they are? Do they know the research? Do they know the studies that show that when you have groups, like community organizations like MIRPA, like Barrios Unidos, like all the other groups that have been on campus, that that actually is much better you know, um, President Acosta, you had us do a moment of silence for the shooting in Georgia. That school had an SRO. Clearly, it didn't, it didn't prevent anything. It's not that the, 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 the issue, like everybody else has said, is not that. It's why is this person feeling that need? You know what actually helps a lot with that? Ethnic studies, huh, funny, huh? Actually, that does. When you start educating people about power structures, about where they fit in that, what they can do about that, they build a sense of community, that, that need to want to shoot people goes down. I really encourage you all to read the research instead of making decisions out of feelings and beliefs because that is the educated people make educated choices, not based on feelings. Please do your research. Hi, buenas noches, Karina Moreno, um, and I'm back to ask that you do pull 9.16 off of the consent agenda again to, to make sure that these presentations are being brought so that we can actually track what it is, you know, how it is affecting the youth. But I also ask that you think about, like it's been said, what are the alternatives, right? What other options do we have? How do we actually address what the students need? Because a lot of them are very overstimulate, understimulated by their classes, right? There, there's not enough support, tutoring, engaging classes, engaging programs, and so overwhelmed with what's going on in life, right? With what's going on in the schools, out of school, knowing, right, what community you serve. There is a lot going on at all times, and yet we, we don't address that, right? We don't know how to, how to build that community or support a youth what, whatever it is, whether it's interpersonal, whether it's something that's going on at home, an SRO is not going to ask, how are you? You know, is everything okay? Oftentimes they come after the fact, right? They don't really prevent much. They come after the fact. And to see that special ed students are being referred, and so are Latino students at Aptos High School are being referred at disproportionate numbers than what they actually represent in the school population, our data shows exactly what national data shows. SROs are not working, right, on campus. So looking for that alternative, right? And I also ask that we, we look at the sheriff contract, right, that I think was came up last month, too, and, and thinking about that one, too, because I think, so it, it benefits them, right, to be there. They make 300,000 per youth every year who, who's incarcerated. It takes 300,000 to to pay for all of that, whereas we spend, what, 18,000 per student a year here at PVUSD? So, you know, just thinking of those numbers and how do we actually spend money to support their actual needs? Thank you. Resend this contract. Maybe you as a student representative could make the motion. This is very detrimental to the students and a misappropriation of money. You've heard of people 
speak as to what would really benefit students. Don't just sit there like you don't hear people. I have this quote from Martin Luther King Jr. A nation that continues year after year to spend more money on war than on programs of social uplift is a spro approaching spiritual death. We have wars abroad. What did the government just give 20 more billion to slaughter people in Palestine with US funds and military? We have a war on students, a war on education, a war on programs that benefit people. This, this should be rescinded. I have to say, when I retired in 2000, there wasn't all this military on campus, police, SRO, school resource officer. It's police, it's military, it's oppression, and especially detrimental to students of color. You've heard testimonies here. This, this should be responded. And I have to say, when I drive by the schools now in Watsonville, and I see all this fencing enclosed, whereas before people could come off and on campus, the students could play on the weekend, this is really not the way to go in a so-called democracy. Pam Sexton, your name was called. Are you planning on speaking? Yes, I am. So, um, yeah, Pam Sexton again. And I, so I know I spoke earlier. I'm not going to just, I'm not going to repeat that, but um, I spoke under 4.1 because I don't think this item should be on the agenda at all. Uh, I just want to reiterate. Um, I don't think this item should be on the agenda. It is, um, you made decisions um, about the program about, and, and it, it included an annual review. There should be a presentation. There should be public discussion that hasn't happened. So it should not be on the agenda. Take it off and um, bring it back only when you have that prepared. Um, and in the time I have left on the item, I wanna say that in 2020, SROs were removed from PBUSD. And they were removed from our schools because the community and, and the board at that time recognized based on state, local, local, and national data that SROs in our schools would not guarantee safety, that they were a huge drain on funding, and that in fact, they caused harm. They caused harm by feeding the school to prison pipeline, which is, ev there's evidence to that. It's not just a, um, it's not just words, um, particularly impacting students of color, students with disabilities, and students in the trans and queer community. And please um, do, don't go against what you yourself said. I looked through the past minutes, you know this should not be on the agenda. Thank you. I'll call the next, Three speakers and last three speakers to consent agenda, Takashi and Nelly Baqueta and Marilyn Garrett on 9.19. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I said in one of the board meetings last year, but I usually go to bed between eight o'clock and nine o'clock. It's already nine after nine. And I'm not sure how much my brain can work, but I'm trying to <laughs> speak my public comments on this issue. And uh, I'm remembering one of the students at Aptos High School, he was stopped to death by other students. 
it was a couple of years ago. And I joined and attended several community events. And also I attended uh, PBSD board's special meeting. And I, had a, I was very much impressed with all of those events. And some of the speakers mentioned generational trauma, one of the causes of that kind of violence. And at that time, I just recommended both members to study generational trauma. How much have you studied about generational trauma? This is my question to you, not only to you, but also to all of us. And uh, <clears throat> so I have two questions to all of us, including myself. How much are we aware of generational trauma? How do we deal with generational trauma? My learning or my study is just listening and talking, talking and listening, and also helping other people. These are two ways to deal with generational trauma. And one, I have one more question. How is prejudice, racial prejudice, relate to racism? I have two questions to all of us. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nelly Vaquera, president of the PBFT. Um, yeah, Mr. Takashi mentioned the, um, maybe somebody else as well, mentioned the special board meeting that was held at Watsonville High School in the Mellow Center, I think maybe three years ago now. Um, and that was a real impassioned meeting. There were a lot of families and students to speak against bringing back SROs, which had, in previous years, um, a couple years prior, been completely done away with by our board and our administration who supported that we do not need cops at school. Well, I also want to speak from the um, position of uh, now is well, I was when they brought them back, I was board president as well. Um, and unfortunately, the trustees clutched their pearls and made a decision of here, we'll do something terrible, but there's going to be a piece of chocolate with them, as, so it'll make it OK, um, which is our mental health. Why not just invest in mental health? Why not just invent, invest in mental health? You know, we have elementary school counselors who are split between two sites. It took us years to finally get the district to stop getting them placed at several sites. We might finally got it down to just put them at, please only just make them no more than two sites for elementary. Why don't they each have a counselor? Um, but it's also optics. At the beginning of the year on, um, especially a year where you're, you're all going to be hearing about, oh no, the sky is falling, the budget, blah, blah, blah. We all know public education isn't funded very well. But you're not wanting to redo your um, priorities and how you invest in our students, but you're willing to spend money on guns and oppression. So the optics are terrible, and this should be removed. So 9.19 reads, the attached agreement with informed K-12 will provide the district with a software system to support PVUST with electronic forms and processes from permission slips to personal requisitions, the software will allow sites and departments to have integrated processes, which will increase efficiency and workflow. So it states, now, as a retired elementary school teacher of 30 years, 20 years in this district, permission slips to go on field trips, you just got a signed slip from the parents. That's all. All of this digital computer 
uh, microwave radiation technology is really a, a, an irresponsible use of funds, the way I see it. And what goes into computers? All this electronic equipment, resources, waste, when you could just do simple things. I, I think this is, and what you heard from previous speakers here, there's such love of all this digital microwave technology that's a health hazard document. And I bet I'm only one in the room without a cell phone or computer. I have an answering machine on my copper landline. I feel sick around cell phone radiation. I think this should be voted down. That's my opinion. Do we have any other public speakers on item nine? No, we do not. All right. See none. Are there any items that the board wishes to defer? I, Trustee DeSerpa. I'll wait to be recognized. Thank you. Um, I would like to pull item 9.14 and item 9.16. Okay. Trustee Bolano Scow. Um, in addition, I'd like 9.17, and I, I agree with 9.16 as well. Anyone else? Well, then, would one of you like to make a motion to pull items 9.14, 9.16, 9.17 to pre pre approve the consent agenda as I, presented otherwise? I so move. Second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That will carry 701. We will now move to item 9.14, deferred. Mental health clinician consult consultation and observation to support teaching pyramid implementation and classroom social emotional learning in the TKPK classrooms for the 24 25 school year. And Trustee DeSerpa, we will start with you since you asked to defer this uh, yeah. for your questions. So we have several new mental health positions that were added, licensed clinical positions that were added um, in the last few years. We also have a school psychology. Um, team. And so they're specially trained to work with preschool all the way up. So I'm wondering why we need to have a consultant contract when we have our own staff who could actually serve in this purpose. So I don't know who wants to address this, but it, it didn't make any sense to me. So um, this is actually part of the UP, UPK grant funds that we would be spending on this. Um, the reason that we're bringing in the outside Claudia, agency. can I stop you for a second? Because nobody knows what that means. So you need Universal to say the whole thing. pre-kindergarten. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, yeah, I live in the world of acronyms. So... Um, yeah, so that, that grant is actually part of what would be fund. Actually, it is a thing that would be funding this, and we're bringing in the outside agency so that um, the work that they would be doing would be around coaching and helping to set up the um, TK classrooms and the environments in the room. So it's mostly setting up the environment to be developmentally appropriate? Correct. And that's it? And, and the ongoing coaching with the teachers. Ongoing coaching. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so the reason that we would be doing that is because the folks that we do have in our system are already cases, caseloads are full, and we can't pull them from the work that they're already doing. But they are still assessing kids that are younger, correct, in our preschool yes. and early start and mm -hmm. everything to make sure they're getting the proper services. Correct. So that's our staff, our psychologists. Correct. Okay. Yeah, these folks that's would what not I just be doing wanted, that piece. I just wanted to make sure we didn't weren't supplanting those no. positions. Okay. No, this Great. is this is this is other work so that we're not taxing the system. Okay. Um, with that, I would make a motion to support. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. A second. I have a first and a second. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Is there any further questions from the board? Seeing none, I have a first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That'll carry 7-0. Moving to item 9.16. Trustee DeSerpa, you started with a um, 
deferred to consent? Would you sure. like to start? Sure. And I don't know that um, we're prepared tonight to talk more about this issue in full or if we'd like to bring it back for a, a full presentation. Because I have a number of questions and things that I'd, I'd like to say, but if but I can hold that if we're going to bring it back for a presentation. If you'd like to have it back for a presentation, we can bring it back for a presentation. Okay. Um, given the fact that law enforcement has not been able to staff two of the positions for more than, I don't know how many years, two or three years, so we only have one SRO in the community right now in, in our schools, and that's at Aptos High. Are we, is this particular contract that, that's on our agenda tonight, is that just a placeholder so that we're setting aside money in the hope that, we, that they could eventually staff it at some point in the next few months? Yes. So uh, I've been working with Chief Samora, uh, on the positions that have been unfilled for at least two years at PV High School um, and at Watsonville High School, the filling of that position has been intermittent. Uh, part of why those positions haven't been filled is because they do demand a great fit for those positions. Uh, Chief Zamora and his staff don't believe that it's a, anyone can be a fit. We're looking for a particular uh, type of relationship that's being established between students and not policing and the partnership that happens with the mental health clinician um, has to be a, a really tight fit to support that. So it's been difficult to fill those positions. Uh, the Watsonville Police also has had a hard time just filling any of their positions right now. So it is a placeholder in the event that we are able to recruit an appropriate person into the position. And do we have all three mental health clinicians filled at, at all three schools? I, kn I for, believe for we that do. that partnership? Yeah, I, I know we do have that at uh, Watsonville High School, at Aptos High School, and I believe at Pajaro Valley High School, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, so that'll be nice to hear um, in a further report. Uh, maybe Adam has some. Trustee Bolanosco. Thank, thank you, just a, a few questions as well. I know last year, um, Ivan Alcaraz made a presentation to us about how the program was going. Is that a policy that is on the board books, or is that just something that was from 2022 and, and so it's this question that we're getting tonight? Yes, I, I did uh, receive that, that there that was a question regarding that. So I did look into board policy. There is no board policy that that would be a, a mandated presentation. So the board is not out of compliance with that. Um, what I could find in going through the board minutes that is in July of 2022, there was a recommendation by, I believe it's 2022 or 2021, a uh, recommendation um, at the time the vote was taken on the SRO contract that there be an annual review. It didn't say that the annual review needed to be in a board presentation. Uh, the, the actual statements um, were that it was recommended that the um, program be reviewed for its efficacy on an annual basis. Uh, so. The way it reads is a recommendation. We could very much so do a presentation on that. I do assure the board that we regularly do look at um, data from the SRO and mental health clinician pairing through a variety of ways. Survey data, um, taking in how many students have been seen and in what manner they've been seen. So that is uh, looked at regularly. It would be very easy to pull a presentation together for the next board meeting. Thank you. I, th I think that would be useful, um, and and I and I want to thank the comments tonight, and and I agree with the spirit of many of them. At the same time, I get a lot of feedback that the SRO program at Watsonville High is very good and very a very positive thing. The way that's happening from our teachers and classified staff, and that people have changed their mind about that program as well. At PV High, I also get feedback that they wish they've had an SRO for the past year, and what's going on. Um, and so I, I understand there's, there's disagreement, but I, I acknowledge the sentiment and I agree with 
concerns about the school to prison pipeline, which is also why I pulled 9.17, because a lot of it stems from special education and the way that we have problems in that in that district, and I'm, and I'm happy we're gonna do something about that. My next question is about the money. So last year, I, I made a little bit of a point that because we're in part of, we serve the public, the city of Watsonville serves the public, and the city of Watsonville, the voters have consistently approved higher budgets for the police. And to that point, I made, a, I made a little bit of a point that we have budget competing but priorities for our budget. Isn't it only fair that if it's the, bo the board's desire to keep the program going that we share these costs with the city of Watsonville and the county? I understand there's been some, there's some history on that. And then I also, and that would be my preference, I'm not, but my question was, did we did we get a grant last year? Because I thought I heard maybe Ivan or somebody said, did we get a grant to help cover these SRO costs? The SRO and mental health clinician pairing um, came about from the one-time ESSER dollars that the district received. Um, with ESSER dollars sunsetting um, at the end of September, um, this would be a cost that would be absorbed by the general fund. By the general fund, thank you. And so, Last year, we voted, the board voted to approve this contract, and we didn't hire somebody in PV High. So what happened to that money? So uh, we pay for only the services that we receive. So any unspent dollars um, related to um, uh, SRO positions that were not filled, um, that is essentially um, absorbed into a general fund balance. Goes to the general fund balance. Yes. Okay, okay. So, um, I, I, and I know there are security concerns at PV High, and there's been questions I've gotten. Well, can we have another campus security person to help? And things are a lot better there this year because of, of the improved leadership. I want to acknowledge the team over there. Everybody, there's their violent. Their data is way down one year compared to a year ago. The amount of of incidents they've had, and it's because of better leadership. So I want to give credit to that team. So I just want to ask about this because there are good points about not having enough counselors and psychologists, and I think those are those are valid points. It would be my preference that we have a data report. I just think that's in the public interest. Um, I know there's a lot of support for for the SRO on this board. I'm not, but I just think that's that's that would be useful. And, and is there a committee that's active, uh, a public a parent committee that's active in reviewing? or a teacher a parent committee? I know there was one before, but is there? Uh, not that I'm aware of since well, I've been here. Well, I think that might be, might be a, a good idea to have a committee to help, to help review and uh, ensure feedback. So um, those are my comments. Thank you. President is, Costa, can I uh, say one more thing? Sure. Um, in the absence of an SRO at PV High, um, pro our probation, um, department received a grant and I know was supplying uh, probation officers who were stationed on the campus, I believe. So that should be part of the data set that we look at when this uh, presentation is brought back. Cause I don't think they're still there now, but I'm not, I, I just don't know. Thank you. All right, on any other board members wishing to comment? Trustee Dr. Holm? Oh, okay. Trust Trustee Dodge Jr. So if we pull this item tonight, what happens to the SRO at Wantama High School? That is a good question. <laughs> no, yeah. We wouldn't have a contract in place. So he'd be terminated immediately or how would that, how would, that, how would this would work? I would have to work with Watsonville Police Department on next steps. Trustee Dr. Holm. I know that um, you know, we've talked about evidence. And one of the things that was, is really key when you are doing your research is objective searches and searching in a very mindful way. And I know that when I initially researched the SRO issue, I did not have the level of training of conducting, you know, appropriate searches um, in the way that I did a year later. 
And so the second time I kind of delved into this issue, I was very mindful of my search parameters and searching for not just effects of SROs, but looking at negative X, you know, effects of SROs, looking at positive you know, effects of SROs, looking at community impacts of SROs. So broadening that. And I got some very interesting results that were not what I was expecting. And it was sobering. Because it's, you know, there's, when you are conducting, you know, in science, when you get data that do not match your expectation, there is cognitive dissonance that happens. And I was definitely experiencing that. Um, and one particular study that stood out for me was just the effect of SROs when they're integrated into the community, which is what we were trying to achieve with our mental health clinicians. Um, and I grapple with all the levels of community feedback that we've received. And, you know, and it's like, how do we best navigate this? Um, you know, after listening to students from a variety of perspectives, you know, after listening to site personnel, after listening, you know, after looking at what the data was, you know, were, you know, in the literature, I came down to, you know, supporting, you know, the advancement of our program. And I continue with that position and I wrestle with it, but I'm still, you know, I, I still looking at the whole picture, that's where I'm at. Um, and I just think about the students that I have had reach out to me, you know, in support, that we've had at board meetings in support, in addition to the voices that we're, you know, hearing in opposition. And I feel that, that our, our program is at least an attempt to find that balance, and I do think it's appropriate to have a report back. And I, and I get, you know, it's like we, we did commit to an annual review, not necessarily a report, but I get that we have set, you know, an expectation for having that public discussion, and I, I, I support that continuing. Um, I am concerned about not approving a contract at this point because of the disruption particularly at Watsonville High School, where I, I have had feedback about it being a good program. But I definitely think we need to have further discussion about the effects and, you know, and looking at the full range of data so that we're continuing to make the most informed decisions that we can. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Anyone else? Trustee, um, Vice, Vice uh, Trustee Dodge Jr. Uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> Trustee Dodge Jr., sorry. I disagree that it doesn't work at Watsonville High School. You know, my daughter goes there, her friends, you know, my constituents have family there. They believe it does work. We've had many presentations, reports that have shown that you know, some parents have seen, or some parents have reported it, they don't mind it at all, and they support it. So we have that report, I believe. We have that report. Uh, students, administrators, classified workers, even teachers support SROs. You know, you know, I, 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 I've heard, you know, you know, the prison, the, the pipeline issue, you know, because, you know, Bilpa does have, you know, they have, they have good speakers, but we've also been working with Barrio Sunidos. You know, we currently have a contract with Barrio Sunidos at PV. I know we're in talks with Barrio Sunidos at Watsonville High, and I know we're having talks with Barrio Sunidos in E.A. Hall. And so, and a majority of my constituents support an SRO, so I will not be supporting the motion to withdraw this contract. And so I hope my colleagues support that too. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Trustee Soto. All right, prior to me, be, or me being appointed to this board, 
you guys voted down the SRO contract and they were removed. Subsequently, we had a homicide at Aptos High School. One, one. Is one not enough or is one too many? At any rate, I spoke with critical, excuse me, I spoke with deputies who were part of that critical incident. And unfortunately, the level the district played that incident down was unreal because they did not call it a homicide, it was an incident. A student dying on a school campus was an incident. It was a homicide, plain and simple, 187 PC. So the minute they were removed, something happened. So we're gonna make a decision tonight and you had a very valid question there, <laughs> Trustee Dodge. You're out of line, please don't interrupt. The public's already had their time. You've had your time, do not interrupt again. Do not interrupt again. Please do not interrupt again. So you have a very valid point, Danny. We rescind this contract tonight. We remove what we have in place right now. God forbid in the next 24 hours, seven days, something happened. And we've had some credible reports coming across. Some very credible reports. So if we remove them and something were to happen, those people that feel that they should be removed, I hope you carry a great responsibility on your shoulders for your decision. So I have a lot of stuff on my conscience, but I will not sacrifice a child, not even one. You know, it's, I'm gonna go off on a little tangent here. You know, it's, uncan it's unreal to me or unbelievable that there's a level of mentality where you feel that the security of a child, whether it be a teacher, principal, superintendent, custodian, bus driver, maintenance worker, police officer, falling under any of their responsibility doesn't mean anything. Can we have some respect for our trees, please? Thank you. Okay, so, at this point, if the public can't follow our meeting norms, we will recess the meeting until you can get yourselves under control and then we'll come back. So please make a decision if you'd like us to continue with the conversation. You, public's already had their time for sp to speak. It's been brought back to the board. It's the time for the board to deliberate. So yeah, Danny, I, I appreciate your point of view on that and I agree with you that it, if we get rid of them tonight, we're gonna have an issue and God forbid anything were to happen and I pray to God nothing happens, but we're gonna bear that responsibility if we pull them. And you need to think about that. Thank you, Vice President, Trustee Soto. Student Trustee Esquida. Yeah, I just wanted to um, talk about the comments that were made. Um, I don't think the incident that happened at Aptos High is a direct correlation with not having an SRO. A lot of people failed to take into account that students had just returned from the COVID pandemic and did not have any social socialization for almost a year. And having an SRO at Aptos High, it's, it's extremely difficult. And I think having the mental health resource um, professionals on campus is a direct result of having SROs. When you're having an, S an SRO walk around campus looking in classrooms, like that's not benefiting students at all. It's, if anything, it's only creating more fear. And I think that a presentation is necessary um, with statistics and data and hearing the input from students within our district who actively attend our high schools um, is, the most empower is the most important factor of all of this. Thank you, student trustee Esquida. Trustee Bellano scow uh, Yeah, I think, I think it's a good discussion. And I don't think anybody's proposing to rescind the contract necessarily. Um, I think maybe there's a yes and here. Some of us would like some data. But, and you asked a good question, Trustee Dodge Jr., about the timeline. Trustee Dodge Jr., please let Trustee Bellano scow finish. You, you, you asked a valid question about 
and that Dr. Holm also, I heard her express support for your concern that the contract not be interrupted. So that's a valid point. And though, I th I, and I know, I believe, even though I believe the, the SRO at Watsonville is on, on leave, but still it's a contract. And so I hear your point there, but is there a yes and situation here where we could also get a report in the future about the data and, and maybe have a committee review too? Can we, can we do both? I think if, I think if the board wanted to approve, that could happen under the contingency that an, a report come potentially to the next board meeting. And we could definitely form a committee. I think that's a great idea. Trustee DeServa, I'm gonna to go to Trustee Dodge Jr. because he was up next, before, and then I'll bring you him know, to you. Trustee Dodge Jr. You know, kind of going back to what I'm saying, you know, I asked the superintendent what happens. We didn't get an answer, and so I'm not willing to pull this item, to pull this contract. I, you know, I could be wrong in the language, okay, uh, but I just, when the superintendent said, I don't know, we have to go back, that's, I, I'm not willing for that. So. And I'm gonna actually call on a trustee that hasn't had the opportunity to speak, and then I'll come back to you, trustee, to serve if you're fine. Sorry, she's in the corner <laughs> for not behaving. Um, trustee Flores. <laughs> Um, I also have heard um, lots of positive reports from Watsonville High, and I've questioned students at all three high schools, um, and I've, I've heard overwhelming support of, you know, wanting to have SROs. Um, we've heard, you know, PV High students here on at our meetings. Um, I ask students at Aptos because I'm there frequently. Um, I did, do remember at our last presentation, um, we did see some disparities in, in the Aptos high numbers and we brought up our concerns. And I have witnessed the new SRO that's on campus at Aptos this year be a lot more interactive with students. And you know, Danny, I would love your perspective on that a little more being that you're a student there, but from what I've witnessed, because I pay attention, I watch, I wanna see like, I, I watch from far because I want to see like how's it going, and he's very approachable. Um, he's in, engaging with the students more so than I, I witnessed last year. Um, he even I saw him at the Aptos High football game, you know, cheering on with the students, and you know I saw them coming up to him and doing their little handshakes, you know that that guys do, and I thought like oh wow this is a big change from what I witnessed last year. So. Um, Although we are not maybe discussing it here, I, I, I am paying attention and I do have discussions in our one-on-ones. Um, I'm in full support of renewing this contract, but I also am in full support of seeing those, the data, you know, annually or, you know, in some form, um, just because it is important for us to keep an eye on it. And I think we are trying to do it, do a nice balance of the SRO with the mental health and, and make sure that our students do feel safe and that they feel um, that they can approach whichever SRO is on their campus. And so that's what I have to say. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Um, so I'm just gonna add my comments and I'm gonna bring it back to additional comments from the board, um, just so we're making sure all board members who haven't spoken yet can be heard on this. Um, I am one of only two people on this board that never supported removing the SROs, only when we were in COVID and students weren't on campus, obviously made sense. Um, we did have a, a special meeting in the fall of 2021. We've had reviews of it. The district's administration continues to make reviews of it. Um, in light of additional recent events at our schools as well, I, I don't support delaying this any more than at the last meeting I would have supported delaying the sheriff um, renewal of the SRO contract with the Sheriff's Department, Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Department at uh, Aptos High. So I, I do share the concerns that have been expressed by some that by delaying this tonight, it delays the contract. What does that mean in the interim at these school sites? I'm not comfortable with that. Um, I will not let that fall on my back and my shoulders. So um, those are my comments for this at this time. Trustee DeSerpa, 
I'm gonna bring it back to you. I know you said you wanted yeah. to make some more comments. Thank you. I can't remember, maybe Jen, you remember what year it was, but Tony Thurman's office, our state superintendent of schools, put together a very comprehensive um, presentation, a live presentation on um, school policing. And it was the data that was presented was very compelling, much like what people said today. And I was very moved by that. Um, nonetheless, I do feel like if there's one person who could respond in an emergency to some type of gun violence in our schools, I think it matters. And I think, like uh, Trustee Soto said, saving any lives uh, is more important. So with that, I'd like to make a motion to support item 9.16. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. I have a first. I'll second. I have a second. Trustee Bolano Scout, did you have additional comments before I call for a vote? Um, I just was, I don't know if it's too late in protocol, but a friendly amendment that we'd also get a report and possibly have a committee, a friendly amendment. Would you be willing? Yeah. Is it? I Super believe that was already on the table, but if, if you want to embed that in the motion, I'm okay with changing it. I think the superintendent understands the direction that she has a significant board members that would like to see um, a report brought back and other considerations, but we'll, the motion on the floor right now is a motion to approve, and it's been seconded. Any additional comments to the superintendent or direction would be good at this time. All right, see none. I have a first and a second. All those in favor of approving a motion 9.16? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstaining? The motion will carry 7-0. Moving to item 9.17, Trustee Bolano Scow, you wish to defer this item. Would you like to speak to it first? Yes, I'd just like to ask our superintendent um, to highlight the importance of reviewing our SELPA and HR departments and, and why this is important and necessary, because I believe it is. Yes, thank you. So we are proposing to contract with our Fiscal Crisis and Management Assistance Team, also known as FICMAT. Uh, FIC, FICMAT does not only provide support in fiscal and budget t times, but they also provide audits for human resources, as well as special education departments. Those are the two of their specialties in addition to budget. Uh, it is a good practice, a best practice in districts to perform audits in their major departments um, to help and assist in becoming better, more high functioning and, and better. And so the intent of both of these reports is to take a deep dive into our human resources department, the functions and systems in that department and to gather recommendations of some next steps for us um, uh, that would also apply to the special education department to do an audit that would help to make recommendations on some next steps, some areas that we might wanna highlight and lift up um, and well, as well as areas that need addressing. Can I ask one more question? Is is there is it unusual? Because my understanding, and maybe I'm wrong, is that we have it's like we have two different HRs within our district. Two set. Is that comp we have we have a merit. We are a merit system district. The merit system applies to the classified part of um, our human resources department. The classified director or director of classified um, Pam Shanks helps to uh, oversee the functions of the merit system. Uh, the merit system does work in conjunction with all of our systems. It, it really is uh, mainly a process for ensuring uh, fair hiring practices. Well, I just want to thank you for bringing this in. I hope this is not personal against our, our interim HR director, so thank you for stepping up. Um, but I have heard since I've been on this board, especially from our, our teachers, and are classified that there is a desire to improve our HR. So hopefully this is, a and, and SELPA, and, and we heard about that from Nellie earlier. So hopefully this is a step towards that, and I want to thank you, and, and I want to make a motion to approve this item. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Volano Scow. Are there any other questions, comments, deliberation from the board? Trustee Flores. I'd like to second that motion, okay. and I um, feel like a fresh eyes on, you know, some areas where we, could possibly, you know, see some good improvements, I think is, is, a, is a good idea. So yes, I'd like to make a, mo a second. Thank you. I have a first and second. Any other comments or deliberation from the board? 
questions? All right, then I'll come back to me. Um, so um, I just, I actually want to commend Dr. Contreras for bringing FIC Matt um, to us um, to do this study of both our HR department and our SELPA department. The two largest, part, the two departments that as a trustee that we get, I know we get most of the complaints from, it, they revolve around those two departments. So I agree having an independent outside PBUSD set of eyes on it to look through it and to comb through it is imperative for that. Um, I, while being in the seat as board president, have been in conversations with our board's legal counsel who has also recommended FICMAT to the board. So I'm happy to see that you're um, proceeding forward with this. Um, one of the other things that was discussed at the special um, board meeting study session in the summer on the budget was part of that conversation was discussion surrounded around an early retirement incentive program and a majority of the board gave direction to let's proceed with looking at doing a study with that. Will FICMAP be helping with that study or will it be another agency? We did ask FICMAT if they would be able to, and by we, it, um, our CBO and myself, asked if they would be able to provide a study such as that. They felt they had the capacity to do that, but that's not necessarily their specialty, but they were more than willing to look into that for us. However, um, our CBO is looking into another, at least one other company who can provide those services. Uh, and we would be bringing that forward at a future agenda item. Okay. Do you have an idea when we might be looking at that, Judy? At what future board meeting? I imagine um, definitely by maybe the first board meeting in October. And if possible, could we maybe get it on the last board meeting of September? I will try my hardest. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. I mean, because I think what we're talking about is just getting in place who the consulting firm would be, what that'll be, and the study will involve. So, you know, no pressure. I mean, if we can make it by the end of September, because this conversation started back in July, um, that would be great. But if it has to be that first meeting of October. Yeah. Yes, Trustee Dodge Jr. I, I just wanted to also, you know, I've been asking for a couple months, you know, I re I've learned in the time that I've been here, we always haven't had SELPA. SELPA always hasn't been part of the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. And I've been looking for information. When did that happen? You know, I would like to see, you know, if you can ask them, when did SELPA become part of the Pajaro Valley Unified School District? And, you know, SELPA department is a heavy burden on PBUSD. And maybe, you know, we should look at, you know, why did the County of Education um, uh, you know, what was special ed given to us? Did the PBUSD take it? Or I, I, I would like to see a little bit more of that information because I've been researching and I haven't got a lot of answers. And so that's something. Yeah, I can, we can definitely do that. Um, and I do want to note that when we spoke with FICMAT to do the audits for HR and special education, they'll be able to begin the audit for HR shortly, I think within six weeks. Uh, the audit for SELPA will not happen probably until February. They said they were very backed up with requests for that. Uh, we can, I can dive into the information about when we became a single district SELPA and bring that back at a future report. Because from what I've learned, that's not a normal practice for SELPA to be part of I'm not sure if because we're a unified school district, but I know SELPA usually fall, falls under the county. It usually is driven by the size of the district yeah. and their ability to provide resources to their students um, in special education. Well, that's something I'd like to see if we can. We can do that. Perfect. Any other questions, comments, deliberation from the board? Okay, so we have a first and a second on item 9.17 to approve the fiscal crisis and management assistance team study contract. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That will carry 7-0. <clears throat> I will now, and I'm now gonna move us to item 11, 
Um, we will go to 11.1, .1, a public hearing for PBUSD Sunshine proposal to Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers for the 24-2025 school year. This report will be presented by Angelica Renteria, our interim superintendent of HR, and I will now open the public hearing. Good evening, President Acosta, Board of Trustees and Superintendent Dr. Contreras. My name is Angelica Renteria, Interim Assistant Superintendent of HR. This is a public hearing for the proposal to Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers. The RODA Act requires the parties of the collective bargaining process to sunshine an initial proposal and provide the public with an opportunity to comment on the proposals prior to the commencement of negotiations. The district is sunshining the proposal for the reopener negotiations for the 24-25 school year as per the following articles. Article 6, class size, Article 13, evaluation, and Article 17, adult education. I'm sorry, is that all? Ms. Renteria, I'm sorry, is that all? Okay, thank you. All right, to do, <coughs> excuse me. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we do have one. Brandon, where you at? I'll make this one quick. Um, just looking forward to getting negotiations going after we sunshined uh, six months ago. So thank you. Thank you. Um, now I'll bring it back to the board for questions, comments, and deliberation. Any deliberation from the board? Seeing none, I'll close this public hearing. And now I will open 11.2, a public hearing for PBUSD Sunshine proposal to Communication Workers of America for the 24-2025 school year. This report will be presented by our interim superintendent of HR, Ms. Angelica Renteria. Good evening again. Uh, this is a public hearing for the proposal to Communication Workers of America. The RODA Act requires <clears throat> the parties in the collective bargaining process to sunshine the initial proposal and to provide to the public the opportunity to comment on the proposals prior to the commencement of negotiations. The district is sunshining the proposal for the reopener negotiations for the 24-25 school year for the following article. Article 11, Wages and Related Matters. Thank you, Ms. Venturi. Do we have any public speakers on this item? No, we do not. All right, seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for um, deliberation, questions, comments. Any deliberation from the board? I, I just hope Mike Floor is happy and um, we miss him tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Bolano Scout. Anything else? All right, I will close this public hearing and reopen our, to our regular meeting and move us to um, item 12, action items. We're gonna start with 12.1, the 2024-2025 LCAP revision approval. This report will be presented by our Executive Director of Teaching and Learning, Ms. Pugh, welcome. Thank you, good evening, President Acosta, Superintendent Dr. Contreras, board members and cabinet. My name is Peggy Pugh, Executive Director for Teaching and Learning, and I'm here tonight seeking your support in approving our 2425 LCAP. So just a very short recap. You may recall that I stood here with our parent and student representatives back in June and asked you to approve our LCAP, and you so graciously did so, so thank you very much. That was a, a really great community celebration of, of a year of hard work with that committee. Um, and then our County Office of Education reviewed our LCAP, we submitted it to them, and they determined we had just a couple minor edits to make. And so the process requires us to bring it back to the board when those edits need to be made. And so we did that, we, we did our homework over the summer, made our short uh, number of edits. Um, one of them, for example, was they wanted us to just make it more clear the support that they provide to us in support of our LCAP. So we did that um, with some suggested language that they provided to us, and that's it. So it was very minor edits, and I'm here tonight to seek your support. Thank you, Ms. Pugh. Um, do we have any public speakers to this item? 
Uh, we do not. All right, seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for questions, comments, deliberation, any deliberation from the board on item 12.1. Yes, Trustee DeSerpa. Peggy, could you give us a couple of, ex of examples of edits that were made? Can you point so, them yeah, out so real quick? In one area, they asked us to um, more clearly call out where the county provides support for us as um, our county office of education is our partner in um, making sure that we do our due diligence on the LCAP. So that was one. So they provided us with a little bit of language that was just made it more clear the supportive uh, relationship that they provide to us. Um, they also gave us a couple um, suggestions of places to look at a few pieces of our data. Should we um, maybe, we were, um, we said a lot in our LCAP and they said, I wonder if you could say it more simply. And so we, we simplified our language a little bit. Um, and so it, was, it wasn't a lot that we needed to change, um, but those were the types of things they wanted us to do. Thank you, Trustee DeServa. Trustee Bilano Scow. Yeah, my question um, about this would be, I know COE sent us a letter about a year and a half ago or something about some concerns about some of the scores. Is this related to any, is there any correspondence or correspondence? Since I wasn't here a year and a half ago, I'm not sure what letter, but if it was related to test scores, it was probably related to differentiated assistance uh, and low performing student achievement. This, uh, the LCAP could play into that a little bit and it is our map to address our student achievement and how our expenditures will align to support that. Thank you, is, is COE helping us with that? I think it, it was what you, uh, the, the test scores, is, that, is there something going on there? Yes, yeah, the County curious. Office of Education does support and have oversight for districts in differentiated assistance. Thank you, Trustee Milano Scout. Anyone else? All right, seeing none, I will call for a motion. Make a motion to approve. I have second. a motion from Flores, a second from Trustee DeSerpa. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstaining? Or, I'm sorry, no's? <laughs> none? Any abstaining? No, nope. that will carry 7 0. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. I will now move us to 12.2, the 2023-2024 unaudited actual reports. This report will be presented by our CBO, Ms. In. Good evening, President Acosta, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Dr. Contreras. My name is Jenny M, the CBO, and I am so thrilled to introduce our brand new Director of Fiscal Services, Margarita Ponce. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Margarita has been with the district for many years. She has a deep knowledge of all of our programs and our budget and has served as our senior accountant for many years. So uh, Margarita has been instrumental in closing the books. So I wanted to uh, introduce her tonight. So thank, thank you, Margarita. You. Nice meeting you guys. Thank you. <laughs> So I wanted to start off with our brand new collective uh, mission statement developed at the last board meeting. We are committed to cultivating a nurturing environment where every student thrives academically, socially, and emotionally, empowering them to flourish in a dynamic and evolving world. And the unaudited actuals aligns with all of our goals, providing high quality education down to um, fiscal solvency and maintaining um, safe, healthy, positive school environments. And I always like to start off with an overview of the fiscal timeline. Um, so unaudited actuals is closing out um, the 23-24 school year. So what that looks like is back last June, we brought the 23-24 adopted budget to board. And um, at each quarter, at first interim in December, second interim in March, and then at estimated actuals in June, we bring updates to the budget based on what is happening at the local level programmatically and what's happening with the state budget that impacts us. So our team has been hard at work over the summer, um, closing our books. Um, so today we are here with our unaudited actuals. It's called unaudited actuals because um, we're bringing the report before our independent auditors have 
um, concluded their audit, and that comes to you in December, January, usually. So the purpose of um, the unaudited actuals report is to give you a year-end summary of what actually happened with our revenues and expenditures. Um, so after um, board approval and review of our report, um, it goes to the COE where they perform their review before it gets sent to the California Department of Education. So talking about some of the major changes, I always like to compare um, the current period to the prior period, which was estimated actuals back in June. So at that time, we were close to finishing out the school year. Um, we were working on this in May, so we still had a little bit of time left. Um, so some of the shifts are due to um, programs and sites and departments um, finishing out the school year. So the major changes in our general fund and unrestricted revenues um, are related um, mostly to two items. So the first item is um, the 22-23 audit adjustment. We had spoken about that um, when it came to you at adopted budget. So that has been booked um, this year. And then the other um, big item that impacted our unrestricted revenues is our uh, GASB 31. It's called the Fair uh, Market Value Calculation. Um, you may have remembered from last year at 22-23 on audited actuals, this was the first year that our auditors required us to book the entry in our general ledger. Um, what this is is a calculation that shows um, the gain or loss um, unrealized um, gains uh, in our county treasury pooled investments. Um, so in 22-23, um, because of the stock market not doing so well at that time, we had to book about a $5.4 5 million dollar, uh, uh, entry um, in our books, meaning that the cash value that we have in our, in our books was actually higher than if we had to um, completely um, uh, pull out of the investment pool that we, were, that we were in. So this year it's doing a little bit better. So this year the entry that we're booking is about 3.8 million. So that left us with a difference of about 1.6 million that we are now able to recognize back as revenue. So in our general fund unexpected expenditures, um, we had uh, not too much of a shift from estimated actuals. Total was um, less than 1%. Um, the two main big shifts were related to expenditures for Pajaro Middle School reopening. So as we had to uh, order new furniture, order all new supplies um, to reopen after the flood, we had originally budgeted um, those costs in 23-24. Um, as we were going along in construction, um, the purchases actually didn't happen until after June 30th. So because of that, we are shifting the budget from 23-24 uh, into 24-25. So you will see that reflected at first in term in December. The other big shift was, again, moving budget related to a construction project for um, the district office solar project. About uh, a little over 500,000 was originally budgeted um, in 23, 24. Because the project was ongoing past the June 30th deadline, we're moving that budget into the new year. And I wanted to do a breakdown of our unrestricted ending fund balance. Um, I know we get a lot of questions about this, so I felt like it would be important to, to fully break out what makes up the components of our ending fund balance. So in column C, um, that is the column shaded in the light blue. That is our uh, where we're ending 23-24. Uh, so I, as you can see, um, we have the committed amount of the 6.8 million that was by board resolution back in the 16-17 fiscal year to shore up our reserves. Um, we also have um, an amount committed for the four extra teacher days um, in 24-25. And then the assigned amounts we have to continue uh, staffing supports for IAs um, into next year. 
And then those uh, budget changes I just spoke about for uh, PMS as well as the solar project, um, because that's shifting into 24-25, um, I assigned it in our ending fund balance as they're essentially spent. But it's not reflected yet in the budget, in the proposed budget, because the proposed budget is frozen in time from when I presented that back in June. Our 3% mandated um, reserve for economic uncertainties is also included, um, just over 10.7 million. Um, that leaves our unassigned balance and our unrestricted general fund at $32 million. So that reflects um, just under $4 million increase from estimated actuals. And again, that was a combination of our revenues increasing because of the fair market value entry as well as um, expenditure budgets moving into 24-25. And on the restricted side, um, same breakout, I wanted to just show change in unaudited actuals over the prior period. Um, so most of the shift in our restricted was due to our um, one-time ESSER. So we have large construction projects um, totaling about $12 million that uh, uh, went through the summer um, and are scheduled to conclude by the September 30th sunset date. So those projects that have not finished, those budgets were moved um, from 23-24 into this year as well. Um, because ESSER is um, a federal uh, uh, resource um, that is subject to an accounting, it's called unearned revenue rules, which means you can't recognize the revenue until you have a qualifying expenditure. It's essentially a reimbursement program. So uh, there's a corresponding expenditure move that we'll see on the next slide. The other uh, large changes were uh, a new grant we received for the Monterey Bay Clean Bus Program, as well as our STIRS on behalf entry. Um, the STIRS on behalf entry is essentially uh, what we call an in and an out entry, meaning um, this is the uh, portion that the state contributes to our, um, our STIRS uh, um, contribution. Um, we have to book that in our revenues and then there's a corresponding entry in our expenditures. Um, we don't actually receive the cash in our bank. Um, there's no net impact to our fund balance. And in our expenditures, we see uh, that the big shift is those ESSER uh, budget shifts that we just spoke about for the construction projects that have moved into the summer, um, set to conclude by September 30th. And then same thing for the restricted ending fund balance. Um, I broke out the make of our restricted ending fund balance into all of the different grants and categorical, categorical programs that make it up. So as we can see, many of the uh, grants are tied to uh, multi-year uh, spending plans. Um, most of them were approved by the board. Um, so what happens is we get the funds up front in one year. It sits in our fund balance um, meant to be spent down over multiple years. And part of our unrestricted uh, general fund um, expenditures are, are uh, unrestricted to restricted contributions. So I wanted to show the breakdown um, of what makes up our contribution. So about uh, just under 10 million is uh, for our routine and regular uh, repair and maintenance. So by law, we are uh, required to maintain our facilities in good order. Um, so these funds, we are uh, mandated to um, spend a minimum of 3% of our total general fund expenditures um, on routine and regular maintenance. And then uh, majority, uh, just over 75% is um, to support our special education programs. And then for our special education contribution, um, I just wanted to also um, show that uh, in addition to the contribution, there's a $6 million home to school transportation expenditure also from the unrestricted general fund. And this is a screenshot. Um, this is also in the narrative and the unaudited actuals financial report. So with, 
with um, on audit deductuals now um, shifting the ending fund balance. Um, I wanted to show our budget year and then the next two years of the multi-year projections with the new ending fund balance and the impacts in the next out years. I highlighted in yellow some of the impacts that we had already spoken about. Um, so the top uh, row of yellow shows how in the next three years, we are, we are projected to start a deficit spending. Um, this year, because of the sustainable budget plan, um, and phase one of that was trying to find as many qualifying expenditures as we could to start shifting over into other funding sources. So at estimated actuals, um, we talked about all of the uh, qualifying expenditures that we've already reclassified, um, as well as looking at savings that we were able to do through restructuring through vacancies. Um, down below in, this, in the bottom row of yellow, that shows our um, our unassigned general fund ending balance um, through the, through the multi-year projection um, at the current rate of spending. And uh, so this shows again that we just finished up phase one, which is identify all of the immediate savings as much of as much of the low hanging fruit that we could identify in terms of rate sizing the budget. Um, we didn't want to. Um, impact operations in this first phase because we wanted to make sure that as we put the sustainable budget team in place, um, we really want to make sure that we're getting community input in terms of how we are uh, allocating our resources going forward. So for our next steps, our first interim budget update will be brought to you in December. And that includes updated financial projections from July 1st to October 31st. So that will include the state budget um, that was enacted after we brought our adopted budget to you back in June. Um, our team has already started the process of updating revenues and expenditures and adjusting to what's actually happening when school has started. Um, and at the same time, our independent annual audit for the 23-24 is um, underway. We're about halfway through. So they are coming back for an on-site visit in November and uh, we will hopefully get the report to you by December or January. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to the team. Um, this is really a group effort, including all of our principals, our office managers. They are a huge part of maintaining their budgets and our program managers as well. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we do. We have two. <clears throat> so Nelly. Geta and Bill Beecher. Good evening, board. Nelly Baqueta, president of PVFT. <clears throat> I've already stated earlier that it's very inconvenient to receive this report um, today. It uh, doesn't allow us the opportunity to really evaluate uh, what was presented to us. But one of the things that um, I look at when I look at our budget is, you know, I know as a unified school district that 55% of the budget would go towards classroom salaries. And so I would just want to share with the district with, or with the community what that means. That doesn't mean all the people that we represent. That means the actual classroom teachers plus the aides. So plus the support staff. So that's what that funding is. Um, and then what is, you know, the line items that you see <laughs> for the amount that is spent on salaries. So when, a, when it comes to certificated staff, that is inclusive of administration. Um, this last year, the unaudited actual show for the 23-24 school year that 13% of the funds um, spent was on administrative salaries. Um, and taking their salaries out, only $97 million was 
for, and that's counselors, nurses, I think that some of them might come out of, well, they would be under this restricted, but it's still all inclusive. Um, so I only have a few more minutes or not even a minute. Um, interesting thing that I see on the unaudited actuals under materials and supplies, eight and a half million was spent, yet what is budgeted is 115% more for this year uh, to be spent in that area, which is consistently not, there's no need for eight, like to go over eight and a half million. So why is there 18 million budgeted for this year? The ending fund balance increased by 23%. Um, and deficit spending just means that you're using the money in your reserves. It doesn't mean you're growing broke. Thank you. I don't know about you guys, but that was a lot of numbers. It could blow your head off. I'm going to go to a higher level, 40,000 foot look. Uh, recognize that this is a new administration that inherited a budget. You saw a budget last month outside, and I'm going to reflect on that and how you need to look at the next first interim. In the last five years, Wages are up over 30%, both for classified and certificated. At the same time, our attendance is down 22%. There's something wrong there. The district's been out of control. You guys were on the board. You didn't catch it. At the same time, we're going to be losing about 4% of our students a year over the next five years. Budgets don't reflect that. What are we going to do to fix that? Are there plans to reduce headcount? Because the numbers say we've been adding people at the same time we were losing students. Wrong direction. Do you lose, do you start shutting down classrooms? Do you start shutting down schools, which I've brought up in the past? This board needs to make some decisions. How do you adjust your spending to match your $88 coming in? How do you get spending in line with attendance and future attendance? That's a role you guys need to be pushing at the first interim. Thank you. All right. Um, before I bring this um, item back to the board for questions, comments, and deliberation, I'd like to uh, make uh, a point of order and draw to the board's attention the time and ask for the board to have consideration to extend the meeting. And if somebody would like to make a motion to extend it, to please take into consideration how many items we still have left on our public agenda side and the fact that we also still need to reconvene to close session. So I'd like to entertain a motion from someone to extend the meeting. I will make a motion to, as much as I was hoping to avoid having a board meeting on my birthday, I will make a motion to extend the meeting till one o'clock to be on the safe side. Thank you, trustee Dr. Holm. Yeah. And we might sing happy birthday to you. Bring somebody. <laughs> Maybe I can call a mariachi band. <laughs> I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Any opposed? Any abstaining? You don't get a vote. All right, that'll carry 7-0. Okay, so thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm and uh, Trustee Bellano Scow, for that. Now, let's bring 12.2 uh, back to the board for uh, deliberation, please. We'll start with whomever. Who would like to go? Oh, student Trustee Esquida, please. Um, I was just wondering if there was any way to get like a breakdown by school for each of the um, spending just to have that, if that's possible? Yeah, that's a, um, that's a great question. Um, I can definitely uh, bring that uh, forward, as well as um, if you look at our 24-25 uh, adopted budget binder, um, so that was, I believe, in the second June board meeting. Um, in the narrative, um, I presented um, the breakout of the allocations by school site. And we'll be uh, bringing that to uh, uh, as part of our budget packet going forward at every adopted budget. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, student trustee Esquida. Trustee Flores. Thank you, Jenny and team, for all the work that you put into this and for keeping us focused. And you know, you keep 
I love that you keep, you know, reminding us, like, look what we have coming. Look what's, you know, in our future. I'm thankful that we do have that um, reserve balance and that we're even, you know, allocating a little more for this school year to offset some of that. Um, but I just want to thank you for these clear um, graphs. It is a lot of numbers, but it definitely is eye-opening, you know, when we see this. And we do know we have some hard decisions coming up. And we, we are very, very much, you know, talking about that and thinking about that, you know, and um, we will be, I'm sure, bringing it to the public soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Trustee Bolano Scow. Yes, thank you for this presentation. I just want to clarify because it's, it's late and I want to make sure I'm getting my, my graph straight. So the actual figure for the ending fund balance for the unrestricted general fund for 23-24 at $60 million, is that, is that, the, it's on your, is it, I can't remember, slide eight out of 20, is that, is that, that uh, slide 15? Oh, I'm at the PowerPoint. Yes, uh, our um, un unrestricted general fund ending balance, the total is $60 million, um, ending the 23-24 school year. Um, and one thing I always try to say is that is absolutely a staggering number, um, absolutely. But bringing it back to the size of our operating budget, um, our operating budget this year let me go back. Mm -hmm. Our total expenditures um, in the general fund um, is was uh, just over 196 million, not including the contribution to um, our restricted. So, with the contribution to restricted, that is uh, roughly. Um, just under 240 million. Um, our one month of salary and benefits for our district is between 23 to 24 million dollars. So when you think about the scale and scope of what we're operating, all of our school sites, um, Tristy Ocosta, you've mentioned um, several times, and I've really taken it to heart that we are, I believe, the second largest employer. So when you think about that, and the responsibility we have and how much we're uh, putting out every month. So on top of the salaries and benefits, everything it takes to operate, to provide services to our students, that's $60 million. Um, it's, not, it's not the $60 million that I think that we think it is. Um, and then especially because we have to maintain that 3% required reserve. If we dip into that, then um, we go into qualified or negative status. And um, next question, can you overall remind, remind me, is our overall budget, or maybe just on the unrestricted side, is it bigger this year than last year? So, um, so it is um, a little bit bigger, I believe. And if you go to in your budget binder, let me go to on page seven. I have a summary showing um, uh, on audited actuals and then adopted budget and then the next two years. And then right behind it, um, I have the detail that shows 22, 23 on audited actuals. So for if you wanted to look at the unrestricted, um, if you go to page and I'm curious about the Sorry. overall mm -hmm. the overall budget, not just the ending balances. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, our, and our budget has been growing a little bit over the last couple of years, but our enrollment has been declining a little bit over the last couple of years. Yes. And but our attendance is going to get better because we have this attendance, and I think our attendance is better at some of our school sites. So, um, so I, presumably that's why we're going to have why we have the sustainable budget committee because some things. Things are not in alignment. Is that fair to say? It is. Um, so one thing that um, all school districts right now are dealing with is not just the declining enrollment. Um, at our district in the last decade, um, it's about 16 to 17 percent enrollment that we've declined. But because schools are funded on average daily attendance, um, what's been happening is districts, we received the three-year rolling protection during COVID, so that's ongoing. So we're funded on 
either the better of the current year average daily attendance, prior year, or a three-year prior year average, whichever one is higher. So for, uh, for the last few years, we've been protected a little bit by three years of higher enrollment and ADA. So we it included the pre-COVID years. So 24-25 is really going to be the first year where we're funded on three years of COVID. COVID years. So what happened was that ADA, initially it was going to be a cliff drop, but because of the three-year protection, it kind of got pushed out a little bit, but we're there now. So what we're going to start seeing in 24-25 and in our multi-year projections is what we're funded on the ADA, it's dropping dramatically. And do we have a sense of our enrollment? Um, I know that uh, the charters affect our budget. Uh, this year, as of now, do we have a sense of how, how much down it is compared to last year, even when you include the, the, the kindergarten and pre-TK programs? So the numbers are still um, shifting. They haven't been certified yet. Um, uh, we uh, work on, um, it's called the certified CalPATS number, which is based on Census Day. Um, I believe this year it's October 2nd or 4th. Um, when we've been uh, evaluating the enrollment numbers, they have been slightly lower than what we had projected um, at adopted budget. So at adopted budget, we showed a decline over 23-24, and what we're actually seeing is that unfortunately lower um, than what we had projected. Cool. I think, I think it'd be great to have a presentation on that. Uh, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. I know I already spoke, I'm sorry. Just clarification, that 60, 000, 60 million, 30 some thousand is, is allocated already, right? So it's really not 60 million. That's so, correct. Yeah. Thank you, Trustee Bolano Scow, and thank you, Trustee Flores, Trustee De Serpa. Thank you. Um, so there's going to be a tremendous amount of growth and development in both the cities and unincorporated areas because the county is going to be forced to meet an eight-year cycle for housing called the RENA. Um, so like, for example, in the unincorporated areas of the county, we have to build almost 5,000 units of housing for super low, affordable, moderate, and market rate. So I, th I do feel like that will help in terms of our um, enrollment. So I know too that Green Valley Christian School, I, I think just closed, correct? And I thought that we got an influx of those children. They're not closed? Uh, anyway, when is so I'm hopeful that people will come here to Santa Cruz County and and be able to live affordably and raise families because we do need a workforce here. We're missing, as you know, how hard it was to recruit and retain teachers, law enforcement, first responders, even physicians. It's very, very difficult, not to mention all of the other agricultural and um, skilled trades. It's just very, very difficult to make a living here. So I'm hoping that with increased housing, I think we will see an influx of children coming in back into the, into the community. Um, and I have more to say, but I can't remember right now. Thank you. And I, I, I'm going to echo Green with what you said about the increased housing and hopefully more children. Um, but I did ask um, Superintendent uh, Dr. Contreras to speak briefly to what your uh, question, comment regarding um, Green Valley School, because we did a site tour to Aptos Junior High, and this conversation came up when we were there. So would you want to speak to what you know at current point about that? Yeah, I'll, I haven't seen numbers or actual physical registrations, but the Aptos Junior High School principal reported that they have seen an influx of students due to the Green Valley Christian School. I, I believe our understanding, and don't 100% quote us, it was at the time of point of the tour, and we could probably get clarification, was that it's not the school as a whole that has shut down. Some of the grade levels have been evaporated. Okay. And again, don't hold it, you know, that's no really problem. secondhand information. So, but that was our understanding at the time. We could certainly have staff look into that and 
elaborate on that in a board communication. I remembered the other thing I wanted to ask, if that's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so I heard you say that um, that low hanging fruit that you're looking for ways to save money. Can you give us a list? Are you prepared to give us a list tonight of some of the things that some of the ways we're looking at greater efficiencies? Yes, uh, so one of the things that we're looking at is just looking at the district office um, department budgets. Um, so starting to look at um, what are the discretionary allocations. Um, some of the low-hanging fruit is really um, looking at um, uh, vacancies and being very, very mindful of um, when we're hiring um, to make sure that there's a need. Um, so making sure that um, as we're bringing uh, positions back that every single time we're evaluating because that is uh, perhaps one position that we don't have to worry about down the road. So um, things like that, looking at evaluating contracts, um, looking at our supply budgets. Um, so really things that wouldn't have a major impact on us operationally or programmatically at the moment. And then we had talked a little bit about um, the community schools grant that we received. I think it was twenty or no thirty-two million dollars, and how that was going to help close a, a budget gap at least for this next year, right, or the next three years. I I don't know what was shared regarding the community schools grant and a budget gap. Um, the the grant was approved when I came in in May. Um, and that did bring money into the district, but to support the specific actions of community schools. So I'm not sure how that may have been shared previously. Um, I Jenny thought there might. was sort of a redistribution of staff into positions that supported that program. Claudia, where's Chrissy McLean? <laughs> I'm not just knowing what, what positions was hired were hired, um, positions were hired internally for community schools grants. Um, those were mainly classified positions. And I, we, we can bring forward a report of where they came and Helika would be happy to do that. Like where the, what positions were there and, and if they led to positions that were later filled after the hiring. You know, in, in past, um, in the past, we would have all the directors sitting out here who could then come to the mic and answer questions. Has there been a change in protocol that the directors are no longer required to come to these meetings? Uh, yes, we did ask, tell directors that unless there was something that we thought that might come forward that they would need to speak on, that at this late hour, they would uh, be able to be at home. Okay, well, I prepared just, for the I'll work just day. tell you from my perspective, <laughs> it was very, very helpful to have them here. And then they also got to hear the goings on of the board and, and um, ha would have a better understanding, I think, during debriefing and cabinet and everything. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Anyone else? All right, Trustee Dodge Jr. Um. Dr. Contreras, all options should be considered, but as long as I sit here, I will never cut teachers, custodians, bus drivers, instructional aides, office workers, lunch workers, or school nurses, even if it costs me my seat. So I just want you and the public to know that I will never support that, but thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dodge Jr. All right. Um, I just also wanted to comment with regards to the community schools part in our um, in Dr. Contreras's and my um, school site visits and tours of schools at the beginning of the school year over a course of the weeks. Um, I did have the opportunity to speak with some of the community, um, some of the internal employees of the district that were hired into those positions and some of my questions of them were, were you made aware that this position, right, it's, con this is a grant and the ongoing of this will be contingent upon what happens if there will be any further ongoing money. And I was very pleased to hear, as I didn't think I was lied to by Dr. Contreras, that um, as Dr. Contreras and Ms. Renteria had told us, that they made that clear to those employees. So I'm very grateful to both of you for, for doing that. 
and um, providing that for the employees. So there's all transparency as Dr. Contreras has continued to promise open, transparent, honest communication. So, um, and then I'm just gonna say um, thank you for the report. Again, Jenny, you do fabulous presentations. You do a fabulous job drinking down the budget. I think Trustee Flores had said, made comments toward that. So I just wanna commend you and the work that you're doing as our CBO. I think it was a fantastic decision by this board and also your team. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so with that, I don't, we did not have a first or a second. I believe we were just in comments. So I the will first, entertain make a motion. A motion. I have a first from Trustee Bolano Scow. Second. I have a second from Trustee DeSerpa. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? That'll carry 7 0. Thank you, Ms. M, Thank you. for that report. Um, now move to 12.3 approve PBUSD Sunshine Proposal to Pavar Valley Federation of Teachers for the 24 25 school year. This report will be presented by our interim assistant superintendent of HR, Ms. Renteria. Good evening again, um, President Acosta, Board of Trustees and Superintendent Dr. Contreras. My name is Angelica Renteria, Interim Assistant Superintendent of HR. In front of you is the Sunshine Proposal from PPUSD to Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers, as previously presented and discussed as a public hearing item. As I shared earlier today, articles of the proposal include Article 6, Class Size, Article 8, Evaluation, and Article 17, Adult Education. It is recommended that the Governing Board accepts PBUSD Sunshine Proposal to PBFT for the 2024-2025 school, school year. Thank you, Ms. Renteria. Do we have any public speakers to this no, item? We do not. Seeing none, I will bring it back to the Board for questions, comments, and deliberation. Trustee Bolano scow I'm just, just curious, did we already sunshine wages or salaries on this, um, in these negotiations, or is that coming, or is that, was that was six months ago, was that what was? PBFD sunshine, yeah, um, wages and related okay, matters. Okay, okay, just curious, just, um, yeah, I'll make a motion. To, if you need I, I have a first. I'll second. I have a first, I have a second. Any other deliberation from the board? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That'll carry 7-0. Thank you. Moving to item 12.4, the approve of the, to approve PBSC Sunshine Proposal to Communication Workers of America for the 24-25 school year. This report will be presented by our Interim Assistant Superintendent of HR, Ms. Renteria. Good evening again. In front of you is the Sunshine Proposal from PBUSD to Communication Workers of America as previously presented and discussed as a public hearing item. As I shared earlier, the article in this proposal is Article 11 on wages and related matters. It is recommended that, that the governing board accepts PBUSD Sunshine Proposal to CWA for the 24-25 school year. Thank you, Ms. Renteria. Any public speakers this item? Do not. All right, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for questions, comments, and deliberation. Trustee Dr. Holm. I'll move to approve. Second. <laughs> Have a first and a second. Um, any other deliberation from the board? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That will carry 7 0. Thank All you. All right. And I will now move us to item 13, a report and discussion items. 13.1, um, the board governance handbook. This report will be presented by myself, Georgia Acosta, board president, and superintendent of PBUSD, Dr. Heather Contreras. So tonight I would like to present another section of the newly developed board governance handbook. This handbook was developed over the summer of 2024 together with a consulting firm, firm excuse me, and the Governing Board of Education Trustees and Superintendent of PBUSD, Dr. Heather Contreras. So for tonight's meeting, I will review the characteristics of effective governance teams and board's responsibilities. So in looking at our characteristics of the effective governance team, governance members understand they have collective, not individual authority, and that direction to the superintendent is through decisions reached at board meetings to respect the differences between governance and management and allows 
district staff to manage the district. Use of the five governance responsibilities to align and focus the work of the district. The board sets direction, establishes the structure, provides support, ensures accountability, and acts as a community leader. Speaking with a common voice about district priorities, goals, and issues. Engaging and involving the community in district schools and activities, advocating for children, district programs, and public education to the general public, community leaders, and local, state, and national leaders. Board responsibilities are outlined as the board's responsibility in each of the following job areas is to set direction for student learning and achievement, for finance, for facilities, for human resources, for policy, for judicial review, for collective bargaining, for community relations and advocacy. Do you have anything you'd like to add, Dr. Contreras? No, well done, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? Yes, we do. We have Eli Davies, Christine Hong, and Brandon Dinitz. Come on down, you're the next contestant. I'm one of the last of the remaining people here, and that's what brings me to speak to this specific agenda item. I recognize in myself that my comments have become increasingly confrontational, and so I'm taking my own temperature and becoming the, making sure I'm representing myself in the way that I intend to do and I strive to be. Um, and. So I'm not going to get personal on this one, but come on, this is really patronizing to read this to us word for word. This is one of those, like the saying, like, couldn't this meeting be an email? Like we had to extend the board meeting until 1 a.m. And you guys were 17 minutes late today. And then there's a lot of fluff in these meetings and we're capping public comments because we're concerned about time. But then we're going to get a bedtime story that's putting the rest of us to sleep, not to mention how hypocritical some of these comments are. So I will just ask you kindly put this all out in once, send it out as an email, make a poster, do something cool and creative. But please stop reading this to us at every meeting. I need to go home and go to bed. My cat, who's going to feed him? He's grumpy. I know he's going to be pissed when I get home. So please stop reading this to us. And now I'll bring this back to the board for questions, comments, and deliberation. Is there any deliberation from the board? Trustee Flores. I just want to say that um, I appreciate the time that we took to um, come up with this handbook, and I appreciate the time that we're taking to push, like, put it out there to our community members. And I don't believe uplifting our um, stakeholders is fluff. I think it's a time well spent for us, and I look forward to continue doing that. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Vice President, Trustee Soto. Yeah, I'll reiterate what Trustee Flores said. You know, I get people are patronizing what we say and what we do a lot of times, but, you know, we, we spent some time on this, you know. And I put in the effort, just just like every other board member on this uh, board did as well. You know, I even took time in the middle of what I was dealing with to to participate in this. So I think this was time well spent. It sets a guideline and a precedent should things change after November, because apparently you know there's a very strong force that you know wishes to make that change. So if that's the case, then we've left something behind for them to follow. And, and uh, so I thank all of my board members for taking the time to contribute to this. And you know, we also had our differences and discussions on phrases and words and things we were gonna use in this. So thanks, good job. Thank you, Vice President Trustee Soto. Anyone else? Trustee DeSerpa. Yeah, I, I would echo um, the other two trustees and just say thank you to Dr. Contreras and to the rest of the board for coming together and spending, I think, two Saturdays for hours um, kind of getting through this. You know, there's a real crisis, not only in our nation, but in Santa Cruz. There's a lot of school board seats that are open and people don't want to serve. This is not fun 
to be up here. I'll just say that I'm grateful that I have a voice and a vote every time I'm here, but being a school board member is no fun. And the disrespect that comes from people at the microphone is very painful. If you think it doesn't hurt us, well, it does. And I really appreciate, Brandon, that you said you took your own temperature because we all want to come with our best selves. And if you think that your words don't affect us, they do deeply. We're all here because we care about kids and we want to make this district the best it can be. So th I, I do want to thank my fellow colleagues here um, for your time and for your effort and, and for giving each other grace to get through um, the very first of its kind here in our district. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Trustee Dr. Holm, did you have a comment you'd like to make? Um, just to go to Trustee DeSerpa's point, it's like when um, I had a reporter speak to me about my, my resignation and they were asking me, you know, questions about why I thought it was, you know, hard to recruit and retain board members, you know. Um, I know for my last election cycle, I went unchallenged, right? Um, and derisive and dismissive comments about us to, that's fine. That's the public's right. Um, but I think that, you know, to Trustee Soto's point, it's like, this is something to build a framework and a groundwork so that we can have a more functioning board. You know, we, we all know that we've, we've had our disagreements and the challenges that has had. And one thing I applaud is the opportunity to create something that will outlast the individuals in the seats. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity for, you know, having a, dis a public discussion about it, whether or not everyone appreciates it or not. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Trustee Belanoska, would you like to add anything? <laughs> Trustee Dodge Jr. Uh, damned if we do, damned if we don't. But I'm glad we put this together. You know, I think my colleagues, you know, I know Soto, you were going through some things in your personal life, but you still showed up. And, you know, even though me and my colleagues disagree, you know, we do what we can to be respectful. And, you know, being disrespected here in public sometimes, you know, it, it, it does get to me. But when I, when I go home and, or when I go out to my trustee area and when I listen to the people that I, I represent who actually live in my trustee area, uh, I do it for them. And so, when I do it for us, and so, thank you guys. Thank you. Student Trustee Esquida, I know you weren't here when this was done. Did you have any comments? I just wanted to express my gratitude to the board for, you know, taking their time to put this together. I know it took a lot of hours, and, you know, it does set the framework for not only the leaders now, but also in the future. Um, so, I think it's ultimately a step forward in the right direction. Thank you, student trustee Esquida. Appreciate it. So, um, my comments on this, um, is I'm pretty much going to echo just about everything that has been said by my colleagues and our student trustee. Um, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Yes, we have disagreed over the years on certain things. We all, um, when we went in this, we'd had this conversation there. I'd mentioned we all come from different backgrounds, different views, whether political, philosophical, personal, whatnot. And I am super appreciative of every one of you and Dr. Contreras and the consulting firm that came in that helped this board to put this together as a legacy of, yes, this board going forward into the future. Um, I'd like to also remind the members of the public that those meetings were open to the public um, to come and have been a part of that. Um, so, and I do also hear, you know, people can disagree and there can be that discourse, but it doesn't have to be disrespectful. It doesn't have to be disrespectful and it doesn't have to be rude. 
Um, the board has established meeting norms. I would suggest that members of the community and public go back and review those because those will be the standards that all members will be held, not just board members, but members of the community that come, staff will be held to at these board meetings. Um, and realize that we're, we are a governing board of education. We are here because of students and about students and we have a student trustee that is sitting up here at the dais with us. And when comments are being made, that's the influence that you're making impressions on as well. So be aware of your own voices, your own energy that you bring in to this space would be all that I could hope to ask of you. So this has already been approved. We will continue to roll this out at each and every board meeting. Those of you that wish not to stay may go home. Um, then we will move on to item 13.2, the sustainable budget team. And this report will be now presented by Dr. Contreras, Superintendent of Schools and our CBO, Ms. M. And so one of the things that we stated in creating the sustainable budget team is that this will be a standing agenda item going forward until the team um, comes to the board to make recommendations. And so for tonight, I would like to share the names of our team. Hey, keep going. <laughs> One more. There we go. Okay. So uh, we did do, we had an application, an open application period in which our community members, as well as our community partners and labor partners and district office leadership and school site administration could apply if they were interested in um, serving on the sustainable budget team. Our labor partners did their application process um, and, and selected their names, uh, including Pavam. And so for our family representatives, you could see the list of names there. I won't read all of them out. We did do a random drawing. It was recorded and, um, and put out so everyone could see it. We had many applicants. We put their names on sticky notes. We used a tumbler. We called them out. Uh, so it was all very fair and transparent. Uh, we have four, rep four people representing each of our grade spans, so from elementary, including TK, through middle school and then high school. And we also selected alternatives in the event that anyone is not able to um, fulfill their commitment. We have our community partners who are also selected, and you can see the names of the community partners there, and then our labor partners. Our district office leadership and school site administrators uh, that were still being selected at the time I had to submit this. So we'll have a further announcement of the names there, but it was also done, um, theirs was done by a vote of their um, like peers. So this is our team. We are gonna be having our first team meeting on September 18th. All of these meetings are open to any member of the public. However, the participating members will be the ones that are on this slide here. Um, we envision this as being a two-way communication so that the members of this team can be approached and available to any member of the community for input and feedback. Um, people who are interested in and tune into the meeting either in person or uh, it will be live streamed and then recorded and posted as well, just like our board meetings, um, can also reach out and share the information. We will have six honorary students as well and they will be selected from um, our student advisory council. So that is the team, and we're very excited for our next steps. Um, Jenny and I will be bringing at the next board meeting uh, an outline of what things we'll be discussing at each of those meetings so that if the community sees something of particular interest, they can go to that meeting. Is that the end of the report? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay. Any public comments? None. Okay. Seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for questions, comments, and deliberation. Trustee Bolano-Scow. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, where will the meetings be held? 
I am. You said it. The meetings will be held in our boardroom at the PBUSD. At the district office. And the first meeting is next office. Wednesday in one week at what time? September 18th at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Excellent. And you got some tremendous names on there. I'm happy. The luck of the of the draw. Got Nora Yerena from Raices and Cariño. I think she's going to bring some great Ashley Flowers, some great labor partners, some of our favorites. Gus Paz, <laughs> Diane Martinez, Ari Parker, Mike Floor. So uh, I'm looking forward to a, a transparent process. I, uh, somebody commented that our process is going to be even more transparent than some other local districts, that, which had similar committees. So that's great that it's going to be live streamed. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to checking it out, learning, and, uh, and hearing more. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bolano Scow. Trustee Flores? Oh, yes, I just wanted to uh, echo what he said, but also ask maybe that, that those meetings could be added to our calendar um, so we could see when those are coming up. Yes, the calendar yes, was in it. The calendar is amazing. But Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Um, but yes, it would be nice to, to have that. I just, when you mentioned it, I went to go see if it's on there and it's not. Um, but I, I look forward to attending, you know, as a wallflower or, you know, watching it next day if possible. Um, and thank you again for the time that it's going to take. And I enjoyed watching your YouTube video of selecting the names. You had a lot of, you had a lot of parents. That was great. That's a, I knew we wouldn't have a problem filling those seats. Perfect. Anyone else? I, I just had a question on one slide that one of the eight named down there was in parentheses and, um, Asterisk, what is the meaning of that? Was I not seeing like a legend to say what? No, the other slide you just had. No. no. Yeah. Oh, those are alternates. Okay, thank you, because I just didn't, yeah, yeah, a ledger would have been like what the, a footnote, I mean. Would yeah, have been that, that would have been helpful. <laughs> I <okay>. agree. <laughs> so Sorry just, about that's that. That's just the one. <laughs> Uh, there, oh, it, no. it looks oh, like it's been done in a couple different ways. Okay, so, so maybe there, just put the word alternate in parentheses mm -hmm. would suffice. Yeah. Actually, it, I, I want to say it was because we didn't have an alternate. And I apologize, I didn't put that. We didn't have an alternate for middle school parents. We, we had three oh. people only and were not able to get an alternate. So you do see that you have the alternate for elementary school and the alternate for high school. But we didn't have one. So you're me. flagging that you don't have an alternate, but that's still an option to look for someone if someone would come forward? Uh, absolutely, yes. Could we ask you to ask, <laughs> going off board governance here, <laughs> um, do, could we do messaging some on that to maybe put something out again up, up to middle school parents? Just Absolutely. absolutely. Awesome. awesome, thank you. Um, Alicia, for the elaboration on that. Anyone else? No? Going once, going twice? Okay, that's it. There are no more um, comments on that. So I will now, at 11.03, adjourn the board back into closed session. Hold on. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, no, wait, no. We're gonna, let's finish the meeting. Hold on. And now it's midnight. Okay, I am going to now reconvene the meeting, uh, the board's meeting from closed session to public session at 12 a.m. on Thursday, September 12th. Do we have any items to report out of closed session? Yes, we do. So from our meeting tonight, night, uh, November, I'm sorry, it's late. September 11, 2024, the board moved to approve the expulsion of student 24250170. Uh, motion number one, closed session item 2.3, I move to approve the certificate of personnel report as presented by district administration on September 11, 2024 with 11 and 15 additional action items. Can I get a second? I'll second. Oh, sorry, you're looking at me. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That'll carry 7-0. Motion number two, closed session item 2.4. Move to approve classified personnel report as presented by district administration on September 11, 2024 
with 12 and 11 additional action items. May I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That'll carry 7-0. And last but not least, closed session item 2.8. Under closed session agenda item 2.8, the board of trustees voted 7-0 to reject a liability claim. And that is all. And that is all. Okay, thank you. Um, moving to 15.1, our next regular board meeting is on September, Wednesday, September 25th, here in the city council chambers. Before the meeting is adjourned, because this is the one and last time, even though this is also unconventional, we're going to do it because it's the one last time we'll have the opportunity to do that. We are going to sing happy birthday <laughs> to none other than our beloved trustee, Dr. Holm. So all those ready? Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jen. <laughs> Happy birthday to you and many more. And with that, I will now adjourn the meeting at 12.02 a.m. Thursday, September 12th.